as a female athlete, I feel such a balance between being fierce and feminine. And it's such a powerful feeling. The initial feeling that I get when I touch the ocean and, and the water and, you know, I feel it on my skin. How do I describe it? It's just the most beautiful feeling in the world. My training needs to change. I need to be put in situations where, where I'm feeling uncomfortable and, and that's where you really learn to grow. You push yourself into these zones that are something different. Home to me feels like comfort and happiness, sunshine, all of the things that make me smile. In these creative outlets, like surfing and photography and music, there's no right or wrong. It's just everybody's individual. Everybody has a unique style and you know when you've captured a moment because it feels right for you. As human beings, photographs and stories, memories, that's all we really have. So it's awesome to be able to capture them in, in the most quality way. We're Tim and Nadine. We are wedding photographers based in Wellington, New Zealand. Using Studio Ninja has allowed us to reduce the amount of time that we spend doing the stuff that we hate the most in this business, which really is the paperwork. Studio Ninja gives us back time. Instead of spending time filling in spreadsheets, we can be off uh, taking pictures, creating art, I don't know, relaxing, making puzzles. Making puzzles. <laughs>
maybe the more that you look at it, you will then pick up the fact that there's leaves on the ground, or there's dapple shadow in the corner, or there's a figure in the window. So there's thought into every aspect.
Hola amigos, I'm Andre Rosalev, worldwide art and fashion photographer. This time I visited Spain. My schedule consisted of various tasks in Valencia and Barcelona, including my workshop and editorial for a magazine. Everywhere I need to be able to achieve an artistic result. I like it than flash using to achieve an overall harmony with natural light. My favorite after boxes created delicate illumination. In this case, it is 88 centimeters. In my workshop in Valencia, I demonstrated the possibility of artistic photography after sunset. It was almost dark, so I will tell you more about the lighting scheme. On the left is an 8200 Pro Flash with a warm conversion filter. On the right is another 8200 Pro Flash with a cold conversion filter. I use it to change the color temperature a bit. Not a blue tint, this is not a blue gel filter. Both flashes with a Fresnel head and diffusers. Those we achieve the color volume. In Barcelona a more difficult task awaited me. 28 dresses, a quick change of locations, unpredictable weather, and unplanned situations, wake up at 6 in the morning. I always have to be ready to shoot in any conditions. This is a conditional simple classification depending on the character of natural light. For this task I had two main tools if we're talking about light modifiers. First, it is a reflector. The sun is a key light or backlight. The general nature of the light is a hot sun. An octabox, when the sun is a field light. Cloudy, the character of the natural light is soft or the model and the most of the skin in the shadow. My task is to achieve harmony. So, the first case, the sun as a key light or backlight. Often I use 8200 Pro with reflector. Another option, just flash without a light modifier, but you need a lot of power. The second case, cloudy, the character of natural light is soft or model and the most of the skin is in the shadow. The sun is a fill light. I use the octobox, in this case 88 cm. It is worth adding that sometimes a large octobox with a diffuser a large distance from the flash to the model for a full body frame require more power. This is a great universal tool for many tasks. Thank you for watching, I wish you a great inspiration. Addition Etching Rag is really a beautiful paper with a distinct texture and grain to the paper surface, but at the same time it holds image detail really well. And that's when I choose Addition Etching, when, when I sort of want a little bit of both, some grain and some texture. It's not as smooth as Printmaking Rag or Velen Museum Rag, for example. Certainly not as smooth as Rag Photographique, but it also holds image detail really well, has great black density, great contrast. Um, it's a 100% cotton rag paper, no OBAs of course, um, and it just feels really nice to hold and touch in your hand. And again, the, the smoothness and the grain of the paper is really nice. And I think it just works well in a wide variety of images, a very versatile paper, um, landscapes, nature, portraits, black and white, abstracts, reproductions even. Um, I particularly like it on some of my landscape images where, for example, I might have an area of the image that's really smooth and I want the grain to add a certain dimension to that part of the image. But at the same time, I have a lot of detail and I want the paper to hold that image detail and sharpness really well.
Hello, Hello welcome, welcome to, to the 2022, 2022 Australian, Australian Photographic Prize. This is the inaugural, inaugural event, event which, which we hope will be a long-lasting long and enduring uh, event, uh, event for photographers around Australia, Australia and, and perhaps from overseas, overseas if they choose, they choose to come, come and join us. Like, like this wonderful, wonderful audience, audience that we have. That we have. Hey, guys, hey guys, how are you? How are you? That's good. That's good. And, and of course, next to me, I have this incredibly illustrious panel of people who are going to help us today by offering some feedback, some suggestions, giving some insight as to why images may have achieved the status they have in this Nikon Digital Awards, which is what we're celebrating and looking at today. So I'm going to refer to my notes every now and then because there's a lot to remember. But for those who are interested and want to know more about this event, more about the rules of the competition, and there are several competitions being run concurrently. Uh, you can go uh, to www.australianphotographicguys.com.au www. www. and if you're not sure, just ring Robin Campbell, I'll give you a number later. <laughs> but joining but me uh, today, uh, today, I have some incredible some photographers, photographers in their own right who are going to offer their, their experience, experience and some advice. So I'll just quickly give you a brief background. You can look them up on Google if you've got Instagram accounts, you'll find all that. They're all famous in lots of places, but we're going to start with Harriet Tarba from the Photo Collective and the person behind me is going to is that right? Me. There you go. There you so go. they even let you get this right in the door. It's a wonderful thing. Collaboration. There's a lot of collaboration going on. I'm very happy to be here. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Next to her is Timothy Moon, Moon, who works, works in partnership, partnership with his wife, Robin, Robin Moon, Moon, who will be joining us again on the, on the, on the, uh, on the uh, panel. panel. We have quite a few judges through that, through that panel. So Tim, so, Tim and, and Robin are here as people who come more from the enthusiast amateur side of things and camera club, but being illustrious photographers in their own right, they like those areas, and we're lucky enough to have them come and offer that service. This is an experience, an experience here. Thanks, yeah, thanks, 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 And thanks, and Robin. Thanks, Robin and, we'll and we'll have a quick chat to you when you come up a bit later. Uh, Paul uh, Holland, Holland from, from Tasmania slash New Zealand slash USA. USA. Uh, several, uh, several passports, it depends which country is in trouble, in trouble, to the other one. But just back to New Zealand last night where he has family and was over the New Zealand awards. Paul is a specialist in a few areas, particularly in landscape, worldwide accomplishments in aerial photography, and also a people photographer to some incredible series on old men and men in particular, which I think was a fascinating body of work. So thanks for joining us, Paul. Thank you, Tony. And then we have the incredibly accomplished Amanda Nielsen, lovely um, uh, person in her own right, but also incredibly thoughtful portrait and family, the very sensitive approach to the way you deal with family and people in portraiture. So we're really privileged to have her, particularly in some of these early Thanks, Tony. Excited to be here. And all the way from sunny Queensland some days. Perfect. Perfect. So, apparently, it's perfect. One day, if you're lucky enough, you're there that day. Well, well, I live on the right side of the Queensland border, which is south of that, but I'm close enough to be in the area of Queensland. And Adam is a specialist in reportage, news, events, and things like that, so he brings a documentary reportage approach to the panel. So, as I said, it's good to have such a diverse and experienced body or group of people to work with us. Our sponsor, Tony, is 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 to give us a little bit of insight into what else could be done because even the winning images in any competition can always be improved upon, at least that's the way I've always felt about it. Uh, as I said, sponsored by KL, and KL are one of Australia's number one supporters of the photographic industry, both in the areas of imaging, graphics and media. Rob Gatto and his team put a lot of support behind just about every event that has anything to do with photography uh, and including some of the major brands that people are able to access in this country. We're very privileged to have KL, as always, an incredible sponsor of this event. We thank them immensely. And if you ever see, now when you get out there in the expo, there's a, a lot to see out there if you get a chance to come down here into where we are here in Melbourne. Um, go and have a look. They'll give you an answer to any questions, papers, uh, equipment, etc. But please say thank you to them for their support, because without them, things like this can't happen. Uh, but coming to the category, the reason people have sat up, they've got their cup of coffee. Those of you in other parts of the world, there must be millions of you, I'm sorry, we've kept you waiting. Those of you in parts of the world where it's 2am, I'm sorry if you had to stay up. It'll be worth it, I promise you. The knowledge that's going to come from these mouths is incredible. Uh, the people category, which is sponsored by KL, must include at least one person, ranging from candid photographs to formal portraits of families, groups and individuals. Composite images are allowed so long as the post-production doesn't play a significant part in conveying the subject's personality 
or story. This is a digital category only and was only open to amateur photographers. So professionals were not allowed to enter this. There's another competition for them, which we'll be judging in the following two days, which is a print competition. That's another story. So we're going to go through 10 images. We'll probably spend 20, 25 minutes looking at these 10 images. We'll take a short break and we'll move on to the next category, which I understand will be landscape. But we're starting with people, 10 images. We don't know which one of these images is one or come second and third. But they're all finalists, they've all got something positive in mind. If you're like me, you can't wait to see what they have. That's it. All right, uh, if we could have that first image, that'd be great. Okay, I'm going to start with Amanda Nielsen. Amanda, tell us a little bit about why you feel this image made that top 10. Okay, thanks, okay, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Um, um, first of all, congratulations, congratulations to, to um, the photographer. It's a beautiful, beautiful image. image. Um, um, straight away, the light, the light on, on, the, on the girl's on the face, face um, draws you right in, right in. And, then and then there's so much so more to look at within the image, image as we go around the image, all those beautiful details. Detail. And, um, and um, I really enjoying the texture in the, the, in the background there that gives a lot of atmosphere to the image. And the character at the back. Who, who is, is telling, that, telling story that story that we're, that we're seeing, we're seeing here, here, this workshop. This workshop. Um, um, I, like I like the blue, the, blue the blue is, blue is the image that, that um, is very, is very um, um, it's an industrial feel because, because of um, um, metallic, metallic colour. Color. And yet yeah, yeah, the light, the light on, that on that doll's face, face that brings, brings you back, you back again. again. Okay. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, Tim, what would you add something to that? I think there's dimensionality there, just that little sense of three dimension in the, uh, in the image, that's always a, something hard to capture and this one really stands out where the figure is just separated out from the background, so uh, great job there. Paul, I know some of your men's work involved with men's shirts and things like that, is it the element of that here? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a, 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 there's a, 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 a as already spoken, there's, there's an incredible spatial, spatial depth, depth here. here. Like, you can literally feel your way into this and walk your way walk your way around the elements in the frame, frame. Almost, almost physically, which is quite a, an amazing thing to do when it's coming out of a two-dimensional sort of place. The lighting is quite exquisite. The the way the two characters kind of just offset each other a little bit, almost like leaning into each other. So, so there's this unconscious connection between and this mystery about why the two of them present. You know, what's their bond? What's their connection? What's what's the movement? And there's this lovely pockets of, of colour and beautiful little um, nuances and elements, and elements, elements that, that, that you can weave through, through with your eyes and, and, and really ponder on what they add to the narrative. Adam, as we said, these are ten finalists. These are great images. But there's always something you could perhaps offer a photographer to consider. Is there anything you think could be considered to improve? Yes, yes, yes we've talked about, talked about the three-dimensionality of, of the image, the image and I think... You've got, you've got these white elements, elements there that are really, really well handled within the, the, the palettes that make this cool and warm palette. I think you can, look, you can look, at look at the post, post in, in, in perhaps in your post production to enhance the mood, the mood of that lighting that, that sort of really pushes, pushes us in towards those central characters. So you don't, you don't, you don't want, you want Ebert's you you to sort of wander off into the space. I think if you even look at post production, it's really draw us even further in and perhaps mirror the intention of the lights that are hanging there. You can you can really focus. In and get us, and get us into that story. It, it, it is a well-crafted image, that's what we're saying. Harriet, anything to do? Yeah, I'm yeah, happy to think the other panellists said it all, really, really is beautiful, beautiful image. image. Um, very, um, very, well very well constructed and technically really sound, 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 sound and beautiful. Um, um, I, agreed, I agreed, like, like I think there was this one little spot in the middle, this beautiful red shoe, which was just gorgeous, but perhaps a little brighter than the rest of the background, which kind of drew me out of that kind of depth in there a little bit. Um, but, but a, a small thing, really, a small thing, just a, 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 um, but, but beautiful, a beautiful story in that image as well. Well done to the photographer there, and that's the reason I started with Amanda, because you probably hear us refer to Amanda as Boots, and I saw the Boots <laughs> 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 All right, Good luck to that uh, photographer for, for Sunday night when they announce the winners. We'll have the next image then. Thank you. And this time we might start with Paul. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I this know, is the first time I've seen this image, unlike some, some, here, some here, and it takes a it moment, takes I guess, to, to, to feel to into feel the narrative, narrative right? There's a lot of, of courageous and, and vulnerability, vulnerability being presented here, and, and, and 
you know, the, the, the amount of body and skin being shown and this, this you know, this graphical representation of either a broken or a, or a piecemeal aspect of, of self that's, that's being explored. So it's, it's definitely the kind of image that demands a bit of time from you, which, which gives a lot of power. Adam, this is... Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's something, there's something about, the about the games, I think, that, and it's, and it's, the, it's, it's in the eyes of the eyes of, you know, and that's a and nice line through, through the eyes, eyes yeah, that really, yeah, really, really grabs you, and, and, there's, and sort there's sort of intensity there, 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 and you, you work your way down, down the frame, the texture, texture of the skin, you really reinforces that, it's a very simple, direct story, but it's well communicated through that sort of use of texture, and even the sort of flatness of that background, you get a sense of place. Like it's, like got, it's got that kind of mixed lighting, lighting in an old house, kind of feel kind of without, without really, really being in your face. It's not the first thing, thing you notice, but the more, more you look around the image, uh, I think, I think it, it, really it really enhances those eyes. eyes. I think, I think uh, looking, uh, looking even forward, forward, forward there's something that you know, the photographer's looking at, playing with props, maybe allowing a bit more space, or maybe making the crop a little more awkward to really emphasize that tension that could be there. There's a lot to be explored with this in front. There's definitely a lot to like. There's a real intensity and a simplicity that communicates that story so well. Harry? Yeah, I love this image. It's beautiful. It's, I think the gaze of movement and, and the gaze of the photograph really hit you, both 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 sides of her. Um, I think her body's beautiful. The skin on her body is gorgeous. Um, the crop is... It's obviously critique a little bit. The crop is a little off somehow, but I don't think it really matters. I think it's, um, I think it's stunning, and it's all about that the, the person in it. And you don't need any bells and whistles around it. It's just really about that woman, and it's great. Amanda, how do you feel about the crop? I mean, obviously, this is a award-winning image. It's in the top ten, right? Yeah, I actually, yeah, I actually enjoy, enjoy the crop. The crop. Um, having a little bit to the bit side, to the side um, gives, um, gives um, me the feeling, me the feeling of, what's of what's coming next, coming next this, for this, this lady. There's, there's space, space there for there something, something that would happen. happen. I also, I also really, really um, um, got the story, got the story there, there that, that the path, the path of the journey that this lady has gone through from the photograph to now was not straight. There's there's this bend through that gap where she's coming through, so it's not been perhaps an easy journey. I, I love the uh, what you can read into the image. So I think one of the successes in the image is giving you space to move, to, to think, to walk. And everyone responds differently. Um, so in this instance, you know, is the question of is she looking, having lived her life looking through the eyes in the image, or you know what, what's the story that's been told? And, and just listening to the panel, the, the different interaction. That, I think that's the success in the great images that. Everyone responds differently. There's so much given to respond to. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Cos. And, and yeah, a couple of different opinions there, obviously, which is reflected in the fact that we're all going to respond differently to these types of images. Can I just, can I just, have, I just have, have one? I really appreciate, appreciate that story of, of, of the curved, curved lines. I think, it, I think it's in the styling you're even, even looking. The, the, the lines are quite straight, straight quite, quite a cut line. Perhaps, perhaps even in the styling, styling you're looking, you're looking at like a torn line or perhaps an extra tension through that. It really gets that impression of something being torn apart. Maybe further. I really appreciate that idea of the curved line story. I think it really happens to that as well. Thanks, Adam. And again, congratulations to that photographer for making the top ten. And we certainly wish them wish them every luck on Sunday. Next image, please. Well, when you're ready, ten minutes start the time. I think the most striking part of this image is how striking it is. The, the, the colour, the uh, just the, the impact of the lighting. Just the, uh, and there again, narrative. All, I think all the, the images are strong in narrative. Lots of, lots of things to respond to. And here we've got a survivor, and uh, probably her palette is before her. So that, that what she's, uh, she's providing us um, some evidence of, uh, of the uh, things, things she's used in her survival. So it's very strong. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, very, it's bold. very bold. It, it's very it's arresting. Very arresting. Uh, it's, it's very, very luminous. luminous. And um, it's, it sort of pulls, so pulls us in, us in through these little, little stepping stones, stones that actually, actually carry on all the way through to the back of the image, which, which is quite a graceful kind of line to follow. And all of them sort of add and support uh, the context of the story that's going on in the frame. 
Yeah, I really, yeah, I really appreciate, appreciate obviously, obviously the dynamism, the dynamism of the colour. Color. It's a very, it's a very bold, bold, bold sign. I appreciate, I appreciate that the shapes, that the, shapes the, repetition the repetition of the shapes that we get. Her head, her head is obviously a very, you know, what draws you see, see the same, the same sort of shape in the picture in the background, which kind of gives you an even in the fruit shapes, the pear shapes. I think the narrative of that fruit bowl there is it's like a blocker of personality. I know when I before I, I like to have a um, keyboard player. player. I, I, like I like to have a keyboard in front of me because I feel like it's, 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 it's a bit of a barrier as well. As well. I, I kind of feel, like, feel like that despite that, that barrier that, barrier that she might have put there, she still jumps, jumps forward, forward out of that, that frame. That frame yeah. And then, yeah, so it's, it's sort of, and then you could even go as far as saying the hands, you know, it's a very strong pose with the hands, but is it sort of determination? Is it prayer? There are so many different narratives you can get in this. I think it's a very effectively short image. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really interesting. I think it's, 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 it's a bold move to bring the fruit ball so clearly in front and to almost block the central character in a way. Um, I, don't I don't think it, it uh, hinders the image. I think it, it's, it's quite intriguing as to why the photographer's done that. And obviously it resembles you know, a really important part in that woman's um, journey. And for me, the, 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 thing, the thing that makes the image is actually the imagery in that background. There's a, I think there's a picture of her on the on the side at the back there, there and that, and that just adds such, such a different layer um, um, to, to the image for me and the even the picture on the wall as well I'm not, I'm not sure who's in that picture, picture but it just shows family it shows a life lived and, and uh, yeah, yeah they're all the layers that I like to see in, in, in an image okay. but it's, it's like um, this, this is my past this is where I am yes yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah excellent all right well before we go to the next image I might see if Paul wants to take a break I think you've got to be somewhere else shortly and we're going to invite Robin Moon to join us on this panel. It's such a complicated shape, 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 but it looks, but it looks so organic. organic. And even the, the way that the light falls off the across the frame, the light is contrasting where you want it to be. You get those beautiful, beautiful converging lines, lines to get you, get you into the, where the photo and then falls, falls away beautifully, beautifully around. around. You, know, you, see you see everything you want to see and nothing you don't. It's a very, very strong construct of the image. But a simple narrative that you really pick straight away. You know, I, I don't know the intent of the photographer, I don't think we ever can, but I certainly take away this feeling that this is a story or a bit of a statement about compartmentalisation of life. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many different things, like the way she's placed in all of those geometric shapes is quite interesting as a concept. Congratulations to the photographer again for making that top ten, and good luck on Sunday night. We'll have the next picture to look at. Thank you. <laughs> So 
So you will find sometimes you can't see an image on the screen, and there's a reason for that, given that we're going to a public audience, which includes students, and we've encouraged uh, students at schools who are into photography to tap in and listen to the comments. There are some images that are deemed not necessarily suitable to show in public forum. So what we're doing is giving the judges a chance to look at. The commentary might be a little bit more difficult to add context to, but you'll still get the basics. Um, in essentially, we're looking at an image which involves a figure crouched down, uh, black and white, with a large rope uh, sort of wrapping and embracing. So I might go to Adam to start with uh, some feedback. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think there's a real strength in the, in the image, image that perhaps isn't. isn't yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was obviously it feels, it feels like, like a submissive pose. pose. Yeah, there's a strength, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and all the, all the tones are uh, so, so well, well handled. There's detail, detail everywhere, everywhere you want to be. There's texture everywhere. We want to lead you in this in circular, circular motion, motion that develops that, that, that subject. subject. Um, um, yes, yes, and you know, there's it's, it's, it's a naked figure, figure, but it's kind of not about that. Figure, figure, it's about expression of that person's whether it's struggle or whether it's strength. And the tones are so well placed with that image. Yeah, every, every line emphasizes that strength. strength. Um, um, so, there's so there's a real narrative, narrative and, and yeah, yeah, we'll story through its technical, technical and, and, and yeah, yeah, abilities. Harriet? Yeah, I think the text is a big thing that I'm seeing as well. It's, well. it's the, the, the tautness of the robe. There's a big, thick robe and the tautness of that with the um, tautness of the sort of ribs on the side of her body and her hair and the... You know, I think it's all, it all just kind of merges all in together beautifully. Um, it's very, it's very, very constructed and very well executed. Uh, um, did you have anything to add? Um, no, I, no, I, I, I thought you were about. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 I think we've said everything. Okay, everyone happy? Can you do something? I think the thing that uh, works exceptionally well is the lighting and that texture because it adds to the grittiness of the image right? and the stories we're telling in the image and just the burden and the way that's, that the rope provides and the, the way it's managed. Um, so I think that really important is that grittiness. Cool, thank you. And again, apologies to the audience out there that can't see this image. I'm sure you understand uh, why we're doing that and hopefully the comments are still now. We're talking about lighting, the, the importance of lighting, how that provides texture and grittiness, etc. So. Right, we'll have the next image, please. And good luck to that photographer as well. <laughs> okay, let's start with you, Amanda. Okay, okay so, so um, obviously, obviously we've, we've seen part of this image, image already, already. Um, um, but, but we're getting, we're getting a, a lot more of the story now with this, this journey, journey that, that um, the progression for this, for this lady, lady I'm, I'm assuming, that she's, she's holding up herself, herself images of herself throughout her life. Um, um, I love, I love in the, the in the first, first image the, the contrast between this this flawless, um, innocent, you know, the skin is flawless. There's this glow to her, and this journey that we see, and and um, what happens over time. So it's like this one image is representing time. We're seeing um, a, a whole life in one snapshot, which is um, impressive. And, and again, we're still left with that. What's, what's happened, happened at the end? end. Like, like there's this path that she's gone, gone on. That is, there's this split. There was it was not a straight path, and um, but she's, she's the fact that she's peeking through this. She's, she's survived this. She's she's, she's, she's come, come through this journey, and and it, and, and the, the past. Even, even though there's been, there's been a transformation, transformation she's, she's she's breaking through. Adam, yeah, technically, you know, how do you feel? This obviously it's a strong image. It's done well, and also just perhaps a comment on the use of the triptych. Yeah, I think I think what uh, this illustrates is that there's there's always more more than one way to approach any idea, and we've seen the the, the production of the single idea and, and and how the crop and how the, the you know that works within the story. The triptych kind of gives us, like you said, that that journey through, and it, you know you can um, sort of the juxtaposition, I guess, of that younger photo really gives us that narrative and it really shows you sort of through that journey. Um, technically, I think you know it, again the tones in the main figure are, are well handled. Like it's got this flatness. Um, and we've lost the colour out of this version of the image as well, so we're just down to the, the tones. I think in a triptych, especially like this in a similar situation, technically, 
Um, you know, the, the consistency of the frames is, is, is something that's very, very important. There is, you know, elements of consistency through there that we want, want to keep through that, and that's something that can enhance these sort of images is to really pay attention to those aspects for anybody who, who looks at this image and thinks that they'd like to explore that as well. But, it, you know, it is a, a different aspect on a, on a similar story and, you know, just shows that there's always, as we say, there's always ways to, to take these sort of stories further. Thanks, Thanks Adam. Oh, now, now we're on. <laughs> it was a bit scary, scary wasn't it? <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, Harriet. Yeah, it's so interesting seeing the single as opposed to the triptych. Um, and you sort of can't help but compare the two, uh, being the same person in both. Um, I do like the story of the triptych where it, it kind of develops along the way, but I have to say in this case the single image is more powerful to me. Um, I think it, the photographer or creator of the work was able to sum it up in that one image, and I feel like it maybe didn't need the other additions, but it's kind of really interesting, and I love Adam's comments on um, you know, being able to do things in different ways, you know, being able to do the same thing in different ways. Yeah, I think we always talk about with trip dishes, you know, it's only as strong as its weakest frame, isn't it? If you're creating these sort of images, make sure that every image really adds to that story. If it doesn't add to that story, then you're probably better off to take it out. There, there is probably a justification for all these ones, but it's definitely something to look forward in these stuff. Can I, can I, can I, I think the first, I agree with you, and I think that the single image is probably the stronger if we're going to make a comparison about those two. But with the... The first, the first image on the left there, there's a beautiful, you know, fragility and translucence to the little girl as when she was as a little girl. And then as people age and their skin gets older and wrinklier, it becomes more, goes backwards, becomes more translucent and more fragile. So I like the connection there. And the other one thing that stands out to me is that on the last picture, she's got a look of defiance, of life defiance on her face. You know, this is me and this is my story. You know, she's quite proudly defiant about the way, the way that, that she looks out. now in all the you know Wrink- wrinkled glory <laughs> and, and just that story of you know this is me this is how I've always been but you're seeing me differently on the outside excellent, excellent comments thank you yeah. panel uh, good, good luck to that photographer, photographer. We'll, have we'll have the next image please and again, and again we have an image that's not deemed you know, you know uh, one that we can put in front of all audiences so our judges will have a good look at this uh, again we have a, a stylized nude uh, black and white uh, involving a, a dancer uh, in the air with a cloth. So uh, let's start with you, Amanda. Yeah, um, great image. Um, the first thing I straight away want to know is um, how did they do it? You know, which, is, um, which is impressive. Like just straight away to think about capturing that exact moment where you've got everything how you want it. I really enjoy the twist of the rope around the arms and uh, there's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a frozen action but we, we do have movement there and yeah that, that shape that, that one leg coming, coming out that's drawing you straight straight, straight into the centre of the image it's, it's beautiful tones the light, the light is lovely, lovely and, and yeah, yeah I just really enjoyed it Thanks Amanda Tim? Yeah, I, th- I think the strength in this image because it's up, it's, I think it's by the same what, um, photographer as the original one we saw, it's just that um, uh, I think the story is the rope and how the person deals with the burden of the rope and I think in this image uh, she's in total control of it Um, it's so elegant Uh, the rope is used to fill the frame even though she's um, set to one side so just just, just graphically how that um, how that's uh, put together in filling the frame works really well but that overarching story of of, uh, you know, dealing with the struggle but doing it so eloquently that it becomes a work of art. So um, I think that's that's what I connect with. Adam, you've done a bit of this work. And, uh, yeah, I don't even think there's there's multiple interpretations because, you know, as we said, it's a big rope, but maybe the energy of that photo coming down at the bottom left, maybe it's, you know, it's dancer wants to jump. You know, I, 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 when we do dance photos, I'm astounded by how far they are above the, the floor. Sometimes it doesn't look real, and so perhaps when the dancers look at this, they're still in perfect form, and that's so important in these photos. The, 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 the form is, but maybe it's this rope pointing back, and you know, it's, it's a struggle to get away from something. And you know, there are so many stories in such a, a simply presented image, that the, but it's as we said, really well lit, really well timed, and in the form, it's, it, it ticks all those right boxes, and then gives us that little bit of story on top of that. Yeah, I'm always fascinated by the 
the variety of interpretations that we as viewers can make, because I sort of went where Adam went. So that sort of trying to get away and being connected to the earth and the heaviness of, of being earthbound. But um, if, if it's not technically finished really well and not presented to us in a way that we can sit and explore that narrative, then we get caught up in the technical deficiencies. And obviously this doesn't have any of those because it's made the top ten. Harry, yeah. any comments? Yeah, I mean, it's technically beautiful. It's um, been photographed excellently. I love the way that, yeah, the rope just touches the ground just on that bottom uh, right-hand side. Like, yeah, the, the shape is incredible. My, my immediate thought is uh, how many times would this woman have to jump? <laughs> you know, she must be very fit. Only one. Just one. Only one. Um, yeah, it's, be- it's, a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful photograph. It's technically... Um, very confident, and um, yeah, I like the story behind it as well. There's definitely layers there. Thanks, Harriet, and um, good luck to the photographer for, for Sunday night. Like the next image, please. Oh, next, next image. <laughs> I'm getting the talk Tony filling the gaps <laughs> because we have another one that you don't get to see. Uh, this one is a colour image. Uh, again, it's a, a nude involving a, a figure and some props. Uh, so let's see what the judges think about this. Um, we might start this time with Robin. Oh, is, is coming, coming back to us. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, like, like the other, the other series, series, like the other series, 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 Raw, and, and the rope, rope is a raw texture as well, as well. And, the and the background is just so simple and so pure that the whole, all, all of those three elements combined to just make a really simple, simple beauty. Amanda? Yes, yes I, I agree with everything that Robin, Robin said. said. Um, I just, I just enjoying, enjoying the fact that one of the end, end of the rope is neatly knotted, knotted, knotted or, or um, and, and the other one is frayed and going everywhere. So I think that's the... So the one, one place, place in the image where we, where we get to where, where something is out of control, control because everything else is so beautifully formed and, and, and her pose and, and um, um, like the last image as well, the hands, the feet, the feet everything, everything is so, so well controlled and then um, we, um, we have the movement of the rope and right, right at the very end this is this really, really some tension with this frayness. Yeah, I mean, you can't help but compare the, the photos that we've seen, which is what we do, you know, as viewers of photography. We, we compare and we contrast against other images that we're looking at. And as a series, I think these are beautiful together. I think as a kind of a project where people are working on the rope representing, you know, the, the struggles of life, perhaps. And this one, you know, the woman's freeing herself. And it's, you know, it's lovely. And, I lo- and seeing them all together is, is great. Um, as a standalone image, it's beautiful. It's, again, technically very um, you know, well, well held and well, well shot. So, yeah, congratulations to the um, photographer. Of course, we, we can't assume that they are the same. Of course we can't, yeah. yeah. There's a similarity in the images for sure. Absolutely, yeah. It's not identical rope, is it? And I think that's important. It's important to kind of also mention that, you know, we do see similarities, you know, and we do make connections, and whether it's the same photographer or not, we can't help but do that as viewers, so to bring bring that into the conversation is interesting as well, but yes, we, we don't know if they're the same photographer. 20, 25 bucks a metre in Bunnings, apparently. <laughs> um, look, I think there's, we've, we've said a lot of the, the I appreciate the, the Y shape that's sort of created in the, in the you know, and that's, um, that's, not, that's not good, good luck, that's good management, you know, we've, we've designed it. I think there's a lot of possibilities with this frame too. I, I think, you know, perhaps we, to, to explore this idea further, it's a perfect pose, but maybe does that, can we explore that? Maybe is there imperfection, you know, can we have a bit more expression in the head, even though it's away from us? You know, it's something you can really really explore and play with um, expression even though you can't see eyes, you can't see faces I think it's, it, it gives us that impression of that perfect you know, figure fighting against, which works wonderfully in the context of this But you know, and then even playing with cops, playing with space, you know, gives you so much more um, you know, narrative and interpretation that you can get um, there's a lot of potential in what's already a very well constructed image I think this is the only one where I comment on the cropping 
and this is the only one I think it's a little bit tight on the at the bottom of the picture and just needed a bit more space. So the rest of them, I think, perfect. perfect. This one just feels a bit tight at the base. Okay. Good comments all. And uh, again, congratulations. Top 10, uh, no man feet. And uh, good luck on Sunday. Let's have a look at the next image. So it's that one over there, guys. Straight away, the eyes have it as you say, and it's all about those those eyes and whether this is captured at an event or you know put it. It's everything you want to see and nothing that you don't. So the lens choice, the focus choice. You know, we've got a real sharpness in the eyes. All the details that you want to see sharper, sharp, and everything else fades really. Yeah, yeah, beautifully in the back of that bokeh, I don't know how we pronounce it, I could never do it, but kind of it kind of matches the, the, the you know the painting and the, and on the skin. But it's those eyes you just keep coming back to and it gives you that the story of that person and that intense moment picked out of you know whether whether it's you know, posed, picked out, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the right choice. Uh, technically it's the right choice artistically and then we can take everything we want to from that. It's a very, very strong you know, resting image. I like, I like the use of monochrome, monochrome keeping, keeping it monochrome, monochrome because, because it doesn't, it doesn't create any distractions against anywhere against the. It just, it just allows, allows it to be texture and form without, without with the bokeh with background. The background. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my way. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah that, I think the monochrome works beautifully on this shot. Ten, ten. Uh, 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 the, the added layer to this one, which um, sometimes goes um, uncaught, is the eye, can, eye contact with a. Uh, a traditional person, and that isn't always something that is easy to happen, because mostly it's not an eye connection. So, so we tend to um, engage with each other like that more. Uh, and this one, uh, in that context, that gives added strength to the connection uh, with the eyes. Amanda, anything to add? Yeah, beautiful, yeah, beautiful image, and, and it's, very it's very captivating. captivating. Um, um, the, only the only thing, thing that, that I'm Mention is um, there's something on the arm behind the head that I keep keep getting drawn to, and I'm not sure what it is. If it's a bracelet or something, so um, that's that's a little bit distracting for me. So maybe think about that. That was the wristband for the concert. I did wonder that, which you know, I guess. But yeah, sometimes it's good to wonder what something is in an image as well. Okay, congratulations again. Good luck on Sunday, and let's have a look at the next image. And again. Okay. I'm happy to jump in on this one. Go for it, Tim. The, 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 uh, the thing that really stood out for me uh, with this one was just the uh, uh, um, what is illuminated and what is in shadow, right? and how the two work together, and even how what is visible. Um, the girl is very much like the uh, the black swan uh, in the visible image, but in the shadow, very uh, elegant and. Uh, discreet ballerina so so it's just the reveal and uh, and uh, and uh, hiding the image I, th- I think just that just how that works is handled really well here how you it's, yeah, it's so graphic, graphic. it's really um, engaging and I love that yeah so for the viewers at home there's this beautiful um, woman and there's a shadow and as Tim said yeah the shadow looks very sort of ballerina-esque but in the in the reality that you can see the woman's got tattoos on her arms and you know she's she's kind of like a real a real person a real body and I really like that I like seeing um, yeah real bodies rather than perfection all the time the raw to the refined and just how that's handled in the and I think, and I think that single finger that breaches, breaches the, the, the colours, like it cuts across that colour. It's, it's the connection between the two images. It links you uh, to those in such a simple way. And even just the single finger on the right hand side uh, is, 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 you know, we're talking about graphic images and simplicity and communication. Is it a formal salute? Well, <laughs> that's right. Maybe it's the, the tiny bit of rebellion from the, the perfect figure on, on the right hand side. Um, if I only was going to add, add a little bit of improvement, I feel there's a little bit of heaviness just the bottom left of the frame there that perhaps it, it sort of doesn't match the rest and that's, you know, obviously we've got a lot of lighting fall off and so that's the thing to be managed. That may lift the image even further and you just give us that consistency right across the frame but the actual light on the subject is handled.
handled very, very, very well um, everything you want to see again and nothing you don't. And that dimensionality, like the first image we saw where you just got that full sense of three dimensions in the image. So, I, like I like how the image on the left presents is really strong and well defined, and yet her, her reflection, her shadow, is really fragile and, 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 and tiny. So for those that can't see the image, what's the advantage of the black and white? Distraction. There isn't any. So you can see he's not distracted by colour, and it's really shape, form, and, and the reveal. Of, it's a story of light in this one, I think. And I think the story is, is, is light. It sort of really ha- had, um, hones in on that sort of yin and yang as well. I think that, you know, two sides, there's always two sides to a story or there's two sides to a person. And I think that black and white really, like, um, yes, accentuates that. All right, congratulations again. Make top 10. Uh, good luck on the weekend. And we'll have the next image if there is one. We'll be getting closer as getting close. And we'll start with you, Adam. Yeah, yeah a, a crazy, crazy colour palette, palette which is, we, we, you know, sometimes we don't, we don't like the colour palette to kind of jump out and be the what dominates, but it's kind of you know, such an ethereal figure in amongst all this colour, so it gives us a sense of the mood and the place, you know, this is that live concert and it's kind of this figure coming out of the fog and the light, so we're capturing not only the essence of this person who seems almost lost in this, this moment, um, but yeah, it really, yeah, and even the big burst of light out of the back of her head—it's kind of this ethereal moment that's being captured here, and, and the sort of awkwardness of the prop, I think, you know, em- emphasises you know, what we're trying to you know, show this figure to be. Uh, Always an interesting choice: eyes open, eyes closed, and how you connect with the figure, and uh, you get that more inward sense in this image because of the the uh, how that's handled. So, uh, yeah, that. that Contemplative moment. Amanda? Amanda? Yeah, this yeah, is, this an, is image, an image um, that I want to hear. hear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's where, where my mind goes straight away, away. like, um, um, that, that, that information, information of what, what sort of music is this? Um, um, but, but, yeah, yeah enjoy, enjoy that streak, streak of light, light coming, coming through, through um, um, contrasting with that, that beautiful, foggy softness. So, yeah. And anyone else wish to add, Harriet? It's just so pretty. Lovely. Sometimes that's what an image can just be that, isn't it? It's just so beautiful. And you really, you do get a sense of like her emotions and her feelings while she's singing that song. And I think with a lot of music photography, we get that power moment, you know, of microphone up and, you know, sweat dripping. And it's just really nice to see this really gentle, emotive, uh, beautiful image. I didn't know you had another career. <laughs> you did all of the right moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the first in my own house. In my own house. I mean, don't even know what me singing You're outside the of my own house. Sing it. I'm very jealous of her keyboard too. So it's a nice plus two. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of the portrait uh, feedback. That was the top ten. An amazing set of images. And we'd like to wish everybody the best of luck on the weekend. Can't wait to find out which of those is the winner in a couple of uh, place getters. So make sure you tune in for that. We'll be back in about five minutes after some words from our sponsors and things, and we're going to be discussing the landscape category. Thanks again to the panel. Thanks so much. As a female athlete, I feel such a balance between being fierce and feminine. And it's such a a powerful feeling. The initial feeling that I get when I touch the ocean and, and the water and, you know, I feel it on my skin. How do I describe it? It's just the most beautiful feeling in the world. My training needs to change. I need to be put in situations where where I'm feeling uncomfortable and, and that's where you really learn to grow. You push yourself into these zones that are something different. Home to me feels like comfort and happiness, sunshine, all of the things that make me smile. 
in these creative outlets like surfing and photography and music, there's no right or wrong. It's just everybody's individual. Everybody has a unique style and you know when you've captured a moment because it feels right for you. As human beings, photographs and stories, memories, that's all we really have. So it's awesome to be able to capture them in, in the most quality way. We're Tim and Nadine. We are wedding photographers based in Wellington, New Zealand. Using Studio Ninja has allowed us to reduce the amount of time that we spend doing the stuff that we hate the most in this business, which really is the paperwork. Studio Ninja gives us back time. Instead of spending time filling in spreadsheets, we can be off uh, taking pictures, creating art, I don't know, relaxing, making puzzles. Making puzzles. <laughs>
now. With Studio Ninja, I never have to worry about following up on leads, chasing payments, or missing shoots. Fine, beautiful. As I said, I'm a photographer, not an administrator. I'm doing what you love, let Studio Ninja help. photographers who are offering and through, through very, very gen gen generosity, generosity their experience and advice. And we're um, joined, we're joined by, by uh, Mel, Bird uh, Mel Bird from New South Wales. He's a specialist, specialist in landscape and portrait. Just, just flew in. Just flew in, just flew in, just flew in then. So kind of missed the portrait one, but we're going to get hold of you for a landscape category. We're going to look at the ten finalists. Congratulations to the following ten people because their images have made the finals. Of course, it might not be ten people. It could be less than ten and someone got more than one. We'll find, find out, out on Sunday night. night. And while some, while some images, images can sometimes look they come from the same place, they can be somebody different. Because the travels travel together, don't be Robin and Tim. We do. We can be looking at the same things, and obviously some images just stand out that you've got to take it. Uh, we're going to uh, move on to the landscape, landscape category, category, but before we do, just, just a thank you to our sponsor for this category, which is Adobe. Some, some of you may have heard of Adobe. They have, they have a program, program that some of us may use on, on an odd occasion to create some images, and I'm sure, and I'm sure that many of us owe a thanks to Adobe at some point in time, if not all of us. 
Uh, the landscape, uh, landscape category, category is for the purpose of this competition. competition. We consider, we consider landscape, landscape as a photograph of natural scenery. The main, the main group people, people man-made, man-made elements, elements provided, provided none of these additional, additional elements, elements dominate, dominate the photograph. The photograph. Composite, Composite images, images, including, including stitched panoramas, panoramas are allowed allow digital, digital post-production, post-production does not distort the original, original content. content. So, so we're going to look at some landscape, landscape images. images. Congratulations to these 10, 10 people, 10, 10, 10 images, and their photographer authors. Robin White might be saying authors, authors, but I'll call them, call them photographers. photographers. <laughs> um, although Peter Rispa has an interesting, interesting definition on that, you might want to chat about Another time. Let's have a look at the first image of the landscape. The landscape. And I'm, and I'm going to go straight to Mel. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> well, well, this is, this a, is a, a beautiful, beautiful monochrome. monochrome. Uh, the, landscape the landscape is just, just disappearing away, away. And, and we're left, we're left with these, these beautiful, beautiful silhouettes, silhouettes of trees. trees. Um, um, it's a photographer's it's dream, that one tree. Um, um, but to have a stand of trees behind it is just an additional element that really brings it. You know, you know, to the fore and with the square, square crop, crop. sensation. Robin, you're Robin, a bit of a landscape, landscape expert. expert. What do you think? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this one close up. up. It previously it previously well, there's a lovely, lovely texture, texture in the snow in the foreground, in the foreground I, think, I think, which brings which a third, third element, element into the picture. picture. I just no, want to say, say something, something similar. similar. I appreciate, I appreciate the, detail the detail we still, we still have, have, have in the image, despite, despite you know, you know, that, 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 that black and grey. So I think this really, really well handled. Top of top. The story of standing out from the crowd. Just a little comment on the what you said about the detail. Just to remind those of you in the audience here will notice that we have several monitors around the room, and they may appear slightly different. Judges, when they judge, judge on calibrated monitors. Uh, and people, uh, and people like, like KL can help you out with that, such as an ASO monitor, monitor, for instance. Some of the best. Of the best. We, have an we have an ASO monitor, monitor here behind us, and, and we can look we can at look that and that, that's probably fairly close, close to what the judges, judges would have been looking at, whereas, whereas say, screen, screen, on screen on the back or projector, projector while, it while it may be calibrated, they may not be exactly the same depending on how much calibration is going on. Now, you might be sitting at home looking at it on your phone, watching this commentary, you may be looking at your TV, and you might think, what are they talking about? By an ASO. And, uh, and uh, make sure you're editing on that ASO that you use Adobe Photoshop or something similar. similar. So, congratulations so, congratulations to that photographer. Good luck for the Sunday, Sunday Awards. Awards. And now it's next print. Or next, or next image, image, I should say. Is that all habit, habit coming back? back. And, let's, and start let's start with, with Harriet. Harriet. Yeah, very, yeah, very dramatic picture. Uh, um, really, really well. Good, good control, control of the light. I love the way they've kind of blurred out the background, the, the sky. Um, that, it's a very iconic um, landmark, and to do to take it the photo in a really kind of unique way is is wonderful. Thank you, Harry. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think, the, 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 the lines are padded, padded by the highlight, highlight and control, and control on that highlight to really, really, really get us to where we want to be, and all those distracting, distracting and like sky, sky as 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 we're looking everywhere we want to be, the size of the shape, and it shows us a different aspect of something that we're quite familiar with. Just a theatrical nature of the lighting, I think that's the thing that stands out. Congratulations, Congratulations again, again, making top 10. 10. That's, That's my theme feed, particularly in some of the categories we have. We have. Landscape, Landscape is a quite a strongly supported category just about every competition in this country. So to make the top 10, 10 of any of these is, is a fact. Well, so well done, good luck that Sunday. Next image. Next image. This image, this image is beautiful, symmetrical. symmetrical. Yeah, in the yeah, detail, in the detail right, through the right through the centre there, there. Yeah, he's, he's cleverly kept the horizon lines on the shoulder. He or she has a possibility to drop the horizon. Not an author, though. The photographer has, has, kept, has kept a beautifully line lined up from, from the point of the, the wall in the, in the, in the foreground to the, the line up of the steps, steps in the mid-ground. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I think the yeah the the palette choice and the little, little pops of colour, colour like everything, everything leads into that, into that little that, that sort of shape, shape, shape in the middle of the steps. It's the, 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 the dominant, dominant sharp image, and even the little, little pops of colour pushes in there, and the lines push us pushes all into, all into that, that that middle of that motion. So it's really well constructed and the moment of capture. I think balance is a hard thing to get in a landscape image, and this one's. Well, it's well, it's so even though you've got a very strong, heavy headland on the left, you've got the bride from the left to the right to cancel it. 
so just, just visually, visually just looking at how you, know, that you can balance different things by relation or by shape or by colour. So we've seen all of them. See why this, why this one made the top ten. ten. Let's, have a, Let's have, have a look at the next one, one in the top ten. Hurry, hurry. It's so beautiful, just really delicate and subtle. Um, I, it's got a real sort of painterly feel to it, which I think is so evocative of kind of memory and mystique, and I, I really love that. That's um, yeah, it's a really really beautiful image. No, no, what is this kind of string to? Well, I think well, the, the colours have been handled beautifully. Um, um, the, the harmony between the foreground and the sky has, has blended so, so, so well. well. Um, well um, and again, and again, it came to effect. Yeah, I don't, I don't no, I've got to agree with everything. The simplicity is key and yeah, really well presented. There's a subtlety to this image that is your strength, isn't there? It's like a surreal, ethereal nature to it that really communicates a lot of the aspects. Well done. Well done. Congratulations from the top ten. Let's have a look at the next image, thanks. Let's start with you, Tim. Well, um, uh, breaking, breaking up the, the, area, the area of the canvas, or as a paint of might, just how, just how the elements have been put into the corners and fills the canvas with the different, uh, different movement of running through, and just how that's balanced, the colour to draw your eye at the brightest area, so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a well balanced image. Mel? Mel? Yeah, the colour yeah, can, 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 can sometimes, sometimes Right on that edge, really, really beautiful. Pop color again, and again, it does fill the frame really well. And the eye can rest pretty much anywhere. And the color tones, the tones, the emerald tones, run through. Just what keep me staying right in the middle of this picture. Just watch your I think, I think as well as the consistency of this colour across, across here, sometimes, yeah, sometimes we've seen, seen, seen this image that we've seen, seen, if it goes too goes far, too far you, lose you lose that consistency across the frame, across the frame. So, so it might not be the density that, that is different, that is just that, just that saturation. saturation. I think, yeah, we're, 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 we're handled well, well, well in this image. Well done, the artist, photographer. And obviously, top ten is a hell of a So we'll look at the next image, thanks. Yeah, it's so abstract and really graphic, which I really like. There's obviously it's still grounded in kind of what's what's happening there. That I love the tree that's sitting there, and there's I think there's a little person there, and so there's a real interaction with you know humans and nature and what we're doing to the environment. And so there's a real story beyond it, but the the graphic nature of it's really beautiful. And those colours are just you know they really pop. I think, I think it's an exercise, exercise in scale, scale as, well. as well. We've got this, this lone tree, lone tree out, out of this expanse, expanse and, then and we know that's kind of small, small and that's that, and so it's even smaller, and it's like so. Sorry, so just, just the different way that it's just broken, just broken up, up into all those different textures and different, different categories to its palette choice. Yeah, it's really well handled. And just playing with visually where it could be a landscape disappearing from the horizon with the dust clouds and the silver tree, and then go, oh, well, no. So that just adds to the Mel, Mel, no, no, comment, comment on the colour. The colour, the colour is uh, uh, incredible, and I think uh, uh, the orange, orange and green really complement each other superbly. Thanks, Mel. Congratulations to the photographer. We'll be seeing, we'll seeing how they go on Sunday night. Next image, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just love, just love how the the, uh, the, uh, the birds get birds to the left and it's got so much space to go. So you really get that sense of, uh, of movement, of speed, of and capturing these little suckers. They're so fast, and the wind movement is so uh, so fast, and fast, and just being able to isolate all that and freeze the moment. Really well done. Capturing, capturing all the intensity of colour. Are these birds are these birds speed 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 really, really? And they and I agree with you as well. As well. The, can, the, can, the, uh, the photographer, uh, photographer has full has control on his lens and his choice. All is what? 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 All is what?
Uh, it's scientifically correct. Adam? Adam? I think, I think we talk about decisive science moments. Science 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 this is the decisive moment. It's the shape of the wing. Yeah, it gives us that perfect apex of the beak. Uh, all the detail you want, you know, the, you know, palette, the palette around the face, the face draws, us, draws in us in there, and the background, and the background you know, that, you know, that gives the green, the green gives us that environment, that green sometimes a bit of a dirty word in palettes, in palettes it, gives it gives us a sense, sense of that environment, but, you know, but really it draws really draws us in, so the yeah, decisive, decisive moment. moment. Yeah, I, yeah I, I agree with everyone else, I just, the technical um, aspects of this are great, the photographer's very skilled. All right, well, All we're right, going to get the next image in a moment. Before we do it, Harriet, I might get you that little west. We'll bring Amanda back in so we can keep our panel just getting somebody new coming out there every now and then. Thanks, Harriet. Thanks, Harriet. And we're going to get Amanda back in. Yeah, she's joining us. And we'll have the next image, please. And guess who goes first. Well, I love the graphic nature of this image. It's straight away drawn to um, that, that, that bend leaning in um, and then we, which, which, which brings us down to, the, to, that, to that wrench on the ground, on the ground and, and that little story, story what's there. happened there is that, is um, that um, the heart of that tree um, all and over so yeah just the black and white works really well to, to bring out those shapes and make them really good it's oh, there's just such a relationship between that trunk on the floor and, and, and the one still standing. standing. It looks like she's reaching out to touch it. Which in, which that, in that negative space, space just uh, is yeah. zero right in on it. Did they push it over? Or did they, they, they copy it up? You know, which, which, which yeah. is so much, so much metaphor in there, really. Right. Is, right. is it nurturing or is it you know, aggressively standing? I think it's a really, it's really good exercise, exercise, exercise in what I have a lot of respect in landscape, landscape photographers for is that there are probably a thousand, a thousand people may have walked past this, but it's the, it's the lighting, it's the lighting choice, choice and the perspective choice, choice that gets rid of all those other distractions. There's no clouds, there's no hills, there's no, there's no, hills, there's no background. background. Just, just that story, that story of that, those, those two trees, trees and, that's and that's all you want to see, and that's a deliberate choice. I think that's something that you probably don't give the landscape photographers enough credit for, is that they see something that everybody else perhaps just won't show. Yeah, yeah, I just think when, when an image um, gives, gives a little bit of a humour, or you know, when it gives you a laugh when you can see that story, I think that just elevates it to the next level. Comment, comment, all of them. I, I, I thought that was quite interesting just for those reasons as well. Good luck on, Good luck on the weekend. weekend. Next image. Uh, Adam? Uh, Adam? It's, 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 it's a, again, a story, a story of scale, scale and a story of texture, texture that's real. Yeah. The, you know, the, we get that, we get that sort of touch, touchable texture, texture and you feel the fog and you feel the story, I guess, is that little tree branch, tree branch the tree popping, popping out of, you know, standing, standing out from the crown, you know, popping its head out amongst the clouds. So it's, again, another well handled right through all the highlights, everything leads you to that. That's what's a bit more done. Just like, just like um, on a stage, so you know, the, stage the stage is set, set with all the background, and we have, we have the actor appearing stage, stage right in the middle of the, uh, on the bright spot. So it's nicely balanced, and we have a great sense of depth for the story in the image. So many, so many layers to the story. Mel, did you have anything to add? Oh, I just, oh, I just think uh, uh, congratulations on the choice, choice of the just, 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 just that, that tree right, right, right in that spot. Um, um, there was, I can, I can imagine, imagine there would have been a lot of choice, but that one was great. Next image, please, and good luck on the weekend. And we'll start with you, Amanda. Great colour choice. That green is very strong, and it's leading us right to where we want to be. And I'm wondering what this this boat, where it's going, what's happening there. It's I like that it's on the angle there, and there's a journey, a journey happening. Uh, again, uh, again uh, the, the lighting choice, the time of day that this was shot, uh, uh, the, the, the change of that shadow, that shadow just gives us that three dimensionality, uh, you know, it pops out from the background. It's almost, it could be almost astro, it could almost be mouldy, mildewy, you know, it gives us uh, uh, just something that pops out, takes, really takes our attention and really draws us to those details. Robin, Robin, did you just just lovely, lovely, you know, you know a, contrast a contrast between the lovely soft, soft textures in the water and the water. Water. Harsh metal, metal, metal load. load. Okay, 
everybody. Uh, uh, again, again, a strong image, image, and it's nice to see that every now and then that colour pop comes through some of these images. So we've had that beautiful variety of black and white images, and then something all of a sudden bang grabbed you by colour. Other images are grabbing us by form, some are grabbing us by texture uh, or narrative. Uh, next image, thanks. And that brings us to the end of the landscape. So there's <laughs> 10 images there, that went quick. Um, looking forward to seeing who takes out that category on Sunday, and good luck to all of the people who are in that top final 10. We're going to take a 15 minute break, or a short break, and we'll come back with some commentary on reportage, travel, followed by nature and wildlife. I'd like to thank our incredible panel there, Adam, Mel, Robin, Tim, Amanda, Harriet, and Paul, who's got to go off and do some other Walking somewhere else. So we'll see, so you, we'll back see you back shortly. shortly. In the meantime, here's some uh, messages from our sponsors. We're Tim and Nadine. We are wedding photographers based in Wellington, New Zealand. Using Studio Ninja has allowed us to reduce the amount of time that we spend doing the stuff that we hate the most in this business, which really is the paperwork. Is the paperwork. Studio Ninja gives us back time. Instead of spending time filling in spreadsheets, we can be off uh, taking pictures, creating art, I don't know, relaxing, making puzzles. Making puzzles. <laughs> As image makers, we need to look around. We need to see the world. We need to go to museums. We need to go to galleries so we can understand the use of color and light and shadow. In that respect, everything needs to be considered. If there's a rule for the images that we're trying to make, they shouldn't just appeal to architects. They should be images that when framed, your grandmother falls in love with it and wants to hang it on her wall. So the purpose of our image making is not to recreate a photograph. We have the ability to play with light, to play with atmosphere that potentially makes that image more visually engaging. This is our perception of reality. There's an understanding of the colour within a composition. So that colour palette is often driven by the colour in a brick or the timber or the floor. The image in its entirety needs to harmonise. As well as photography, there are painters that we look at. The way that they have painted with colour and tone and light, they're in museums. And it kind of occurred to me that we are recording the architecture of our time. We want to celebrate those images by framing them and put them on a wall. So in years to come, could you have a museum where there are digital paintings that people want to come and visit. A song can be broken down into different elements. They all play a part in the composition of that soundtrack. There'll be something about that song that makes you want to play that song over and over again. And maybe each time you'll pick up on different elements. If we make a successful image, you'll want to look at it over and over again. Maybe the more that you look at it, you will then pick up the fact that there's leaves on the ground, or there's dapple shadow in the corner, or there's a figure in the window. So there's thought into every aspect
Hola amigos, I'm Andrea Rosalif, worldwide art and fashion photographer. This time I visited Spain. My schedule consisted of various tasks in Valencia and Barcelona, including my workshop and editorial for a magazine. Everywhere I need to be able to achieve an artistic result. I like it than flash using to achieve an overall harmony with natural light. My favorite actor boxes created delicate illumination. In this case, it is 88 centimeters. In my workshop in Valencia, I demonstrated the possibility of artistic photography after sunset. It was almost dark, so I will tell you more about the lighting scheme. On the left is an 80-200 Pro Flash with a warm conversion filter. On the right is another 80-200 Pro Flash with a cold conversion filter. I use it to change the color temperature a bit, not a blue tint, this is not a blue gel filter. Both flashes with a Fresnel head and diffusers, those we achieve the color volume. In Barcelona a more difficult task awaited me. 28 dresses, a quick change of locations, unpredictable weather and unplanned situations, wake up at 6 in the morning. I always have to be ready to shoot in any conditions. This is a conditional simple classification depending on the character of natural light. For this task I had two main tools if we're talking about light modifiers. First, it is a reflector. The sun is a key light or backlight. The general nature of the light is a hot sun. An octabox when the sun is a fill light. Cloudy, the character of the natural light is soft or the model and the most of the skin in the shadow. My task is to achieve harmony. So, the first case, the sun as a key light or backlight. Often I use 8200 Pro with reflector. Another option, just flash without light modifier. 
but you need a lot of power. The second case, cloudy. The character of natural light is soft or model and the most of the skin is in the shadow. The sun is a feel light. I use the octobox, in this case 88 centimeters. It is worth adding that sometimes a large octobox with a diffuser a large distance from the flash to the model for a full body frame require more power. This is a great universal tool for many tasks. Thank you for watching, I wish you great inspiration. Edition Etching Rag is really a beautiful paper with a distinct texture and grain to the paper surface, but at the same time it holds image detail really well. And that's when I choose Edition Etching, when, when I sort of want a little bit of both, some grain and some texture. It's not as smooth as printmaking rag or Velen Museum rag, for example. Certainly not as smooth as rag photographique, but it also holds image detail really well, has great black density, great contrast. Um, it's a 100% cotton rag paper, no OBAs, of course. Um, and it just feels really nice to hold and touch in your hand. And again, the, the smoothness and the grain of the paper is really nice. And I think it just works well in a wide variety of images, a very versatile paper, um, landscapes, nature, portraits, black and white, abstracts, reproductions even. Um, I particularly like it on some of my landscape images where, for example, I might have an area of the image that's really smooth and I want the grain to add a certain dimension to that part of the image. But at the same time, I have a lot of detail and I want the paper to hold that image detail and sharpness really well.
The one thing I didn't realise getting into this career was how much time you'd have to spend at your desk. Emails, client bookings, following up on leads, sending out quotes. This stuff takes time. And I remember the time when everything changed. Hey, Ben. No, 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 no worries. I'll, yeah, I'll be there real soon. See you in a sec. Yeah, that was me when I first started. Hey, Sarah, thanks for calling me back. Okay, I'll see you in an hour. Converting inquiries into bookings, sending quotes and contracts, keeping track of all my shoots. It's now all taken care of with Studio Ninja. Smile. With Studio Ninja, I never have to worry about following up on leads, chasing payments, or missing shoots. Fine, beautiful. As I said, I'm a photographer, not an administrator. So if you want to spend more time doing what you love, let Studio Ninja help. photographer in New Jersey. I just want to take you a quick second and tell you about Imagine AI. It's this really cool artificial intelligence editing software that to me when I heard about it was instantly something I wanted to jump on. When I got my first edits back I almost cried when the edits were populating into Lightroom and I was seeing exactly how close it was to how I edit everything. To just imagine how much time I'm gonna save and how much of my life I'm gonna get back from editing in my business, it's life-changing. I hope everyone who does photography tries this out. It's absolutely incredible and it's gonna really transform your business so you get your life back. I couldn't be more excited to share this with everybody I know and I hope everybody will give it a try.
welcome back to the Australian Photographic Prize. Oh, there's an echo in this room. About that. Uh, here we are with our esteemed panel, but we also have an extremely special guest, the uh, Nikon Digital uh, Awards or Nikon Digital Competition is sponsored by Guess Who, Nikon. And next to me, I have the Queen herself. I have the National Professional Markets Manager for Australia and New Zealand for Nikon Imaging, or Nikon Australia Services, Nikon, all of that. And we just went through it for about 30 seconds. And this is. I'm just thinking, how many, how many times can you say Nikon? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Kylie Drench from Nikon, and Nick, she's here to have a little chat with us just quickly about Nikon's involvement and perhaps where they are and where they're going. Oh, that's great. Okay, so where we are today is with all you people who we've missed. I'm going to say, when I saw Tony last night, I was really excited, not just to be out of the house, but to see him in the flesh, not on the screen. Yeah, well, How are you guys? I'm away so much. I don't know what you mean. It was really good to see you too. And when we went through what we all went through, I think it was these relationships that sustained us, not just as a business, but as, um, as part of the community. So congr- I won't start on congratulating everybody that's involved in this just now. Um, in particular, our colleague Julie Kimpton, who is sadly a little sick and can't join us, but she's very much missed. But the company really does rest on the backs of people like Julie and Dylan Ross, Cindy, that's here with me today. Because it takes three of us to cover one of Julie, I've realised. And she is, she is. And the past year or so, Nikon, like a lot of other brands, have struggled with production and delays, but having a product that people want is not really a bad thing. And, yeah, I'm pretty excited to see on the other side of this. Mm-hmm. And having you uh, been involved in a, in a, you know, a event like this, uh, and particularly one that has more than one string to it, how do you yeah. that? Well, confused initially. <laughs> but, um, I've had it explained to me a couple of times, but it, I'm joking. It's great. It's not... The one thing, and it means that there's something for all types of creatives, and you don't have to fit into a particular box to be part of this. Mm-hmm. It can be anything to everybody. So that's what I think makes it interesting and fresh. Well, having, well, having the digital, digital competition, which you guys are the primary sponsor for for today, yeah. uh, and then the print competition, and then of course there's a video competition, and there's a competition specifically for creatives who like to composite and things like that. Yeah. Um, I, think I think that brings, as you say, all corners of the industry together. And of course, it's uh, encouraging students to be involved, and we're going to have some students join us in the audience today after lunch. Uh, this is a student competition, so yeah, it covers all of it. Yeah, we're a competitive lot, it sounds like. <laughs> but I think um, having the students here in particular is, is great to see. You know, it makes things so much more accessible for them. And as we were talking about last night, the technology changes things for people keeps developing and it means something else to all of us and working for a brand like Nikon that's that's a great driver for us it stops you from being stale well well you know as an industry we are incredibly grateful to all our sponsors but Nikon is one of those sponsors that's been with the professional the amateur groups the student groups right across the country for as long as I can remember um, we've been shooting Nikon since up for probably over um, um, I don't tell anybody, and, uh, and uh, you know, and we'll continue to do for another. Uh, so I think we can all, you know, we all are so grateful to Nikon. We're thankful to the team for coming down and putting on the effort. We send our best wishes and love to Julie. Those you better be watching Julie. She, she better be. Um, but uh, we hope she gets better soon because she is missed. She does leave a bit of a vacuum. But they're working hard for you, Jules, I can tell you that. And again, if anyone gets a chance to say thank you to Nikon, either in person here at the show or anywhere you go, just thank them for their support, not just for this weekend, but for every time that there's an industry event in this country or a camera club event, Nikon always put their hand up and contribute. So we just want to say thank you to Nikon and look forward to keeping the relationship going. Not just ours, but the whole the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we wouldn't be here without all of you anyway, so yes. it's a, a reciprocal thing. So I'm going to move away now. You're busy. You've got things to do. Thanks for joining us, and please pass on our thanks, thanks to everyone else back at Nikon. I will in my report to that. <laughs> 12 Nikon. Ladies and gentlemen, Kylie, thank you. This belongs to this. Thank you. Thanks, Kylie. Just move that out of the way. Um, as I, As I said, they're incredible people in the and they help us in so many different ways. A lot of you don't get to see, but 
Let's put, Let's put it inside the whole thing. thing. Incredible yeah. cameras and lenses and gear. All right, All right, we're going to move on to the reportage category, which is sponsored by Adobe. And again, I mentioned earlier that some of you may have come across, stumbled on an Adobe product at some point. I'm sure you're using it in some way. Of course, reportage photographers don't always use Adobe as much as, say, creative, artistic type photographers. No, it's still a, a very valuable tool, though. Um, you know, darkroom techniques are, are emulatable and, you know, even probably... Um, perhaps not easier actually I, I was saying to someone we used to be able to form some pretty funky shapes with our fingers uh, and the enlargers that you probably can't do quite as easily with a Photoshop selection or you know 10, 10 minutes worth of feathering experimentation but definitely it's still a very valuable tool um, and especially things like Lightroom that have really accelerated workflows for, for photojournalists yeah. being able to, to do that sort of stuff so yeah still yeah, very so valuable certainly integrating the creative thought process with the outside world mm. is something that Adobe's contributed to in a big way mm. okay with reportage and we, we're going to move through these next few categories because we have got a bit of a time schedule to keep to uh, entries must be single capture images that portray or give context to an actual event or situation and may among other subject matter include sport daily life the human condition or a newsworthy incident Photographs should have an impact or provoke a lasting emotional response. Staged, contrived or manipulated situations that alter the truth are unacceptable. Basic post-production techniques such as colour, brightness, adjustments, cropping, dodging and burning are allowed in reportage. So let's keep things moving. You guys all good to go? Excellent. Excited. Uh, let's have a look at our first reportage image. And we'll go straight to Harriet. Oh, wonderful. Well, firstly, a very striking image, um, a lot of impact. Um, the monochrome really adds to it, I think, as well. It kind of has a really classic feel, um, very, very dramatic. Yeah, I, I wonder about some of the post-production in this, what we were just talking about, and um, whether it's gone a little bit too far for a reportage category. However, I'm happy to pass over to another judge to Well, let's continue. go to somebody who's... This is right up his alley, Adam. No, look, I, I think, yeah, w w what's been said is is quite... Um, OK, and it's, it's that peak moment of action, again, that decisive moment. And if you've ever photographed horse events, you know, the details like the ears being forward, you know, you could have the, the best image in the world, but if the horse person doesn't have their ears forward, it's, it's, it may as well not be there. So you've really captured that, um, you know, and that moment without, you know, distraction. Um, and there's, you know, everything sort of adds to that, that peak moment of action that's displayed there. Robin? Uh, that catch light in the horse's eyes beautifully just highlights that beautiful moment. Excellent. Okay, congratulations on making the top ten. Good luck on the weekend. And let's have the next image, please. And let's go to Tim. How dynamic is this? A really strong diagonal right through the middle of the picture, left to right, and then just the uh, the various elements placed around, and the uh, just the uh, uh, the emotion shown in the singer's uh, face there. Fantastic. Mel. Dramatic, thank you. That that dramatic um, Michael just tops it off. It's sensational. Adam, comment? Yeah, very quickly as well. It, it, and it's the little things I appreciate, like the, there's a little bit of movement in the in the, the you, in the background there. So you get that you know, the beautifully sharp you know image in the front, but a little bit of movement gives us that dynamism and really adds to what's a, a just a, a spectacular capture. Really well done. So even though it's frozen, they've actually communicated the fact there's a lot of energy on that. Yeah, stage. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, next image, please. Robin. Uh, beautiful, well-seen moment. I love the uh, the light that's just coming, that's highlighting the baby, and the, the photographer has um, managed the highlights really well with the colour coming in as well and the blue surrounding it with the light warms, you know, indicating... You know, a new beginning with a new life coming in through the middle there. Harriet? Yeah, very well executed. I imagine in this situation there's a lot going on and to um, capture that moment really as they're just coming out. I mean, that's truly um, grabbing what's there, which is reportage. Adam? And I think to, to appreciate the technical skill involved, there's those lights are very, very hot and very, very concentrated. So to get that exposure or to control that exposure, whether it's through post or in the capture originally, you know, I think is, is well handled. Yeah, I photographed a couple of births myself and, and you look at that image and it's one of the rare times I've seen colour used to really add a sense of joy 
to a birth shot rather than that sense of which is overwhelming drama often in the black and white so i congratulate the photographer for that as well uh, good luck on the weekend next image please and let's go to harriet yeah very graphic image um uh Definitely sort of street photography, um, that little pop of red is just wonderful, just really highlighting that person walking around these big looming buildings. It kind of has a, a sense of uh, sci-fi or futuristic or uh, something along those lines. It's, yeah, very well executed. Now I'm just going to go to Tim, who has a background as an architect. I, I do, <laughs> and I'm appreciating just the rhythm and the pattern and the shape that they've, they've, uh, they've set the... Uh, the frame with and then uh, putting that image uh, or the person down off to the left and just uh, using that to create that a uh, little bit more interest, a little bit more dynamic, you know, offsetting with the uh, the pole of the uh, the power lines and the person to the left with this very structured background. So a good good composition. You had a comment to add, Adam? Oh, just that again, like we said, perhaps in landscape and even more so in reportage, it's about the ability of seeing things in a way that other people may have walked past this scene a thousand times and we've got the light right, we've got the composition right, everything flows to this moment that evokes something in us. It doesn't have to have a specific story as such, it just evokes an emotion. I think that's why it's successful. It's about the timing and the nexus of all of those elements coming together. But with an architectural background, Climb up the verticals. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought you might go I was waiting for that. <laughs> I thought you might. And, and, and just quick, quickly, how might you do that, Tim, using an Adobe product? Yes, well, uh, <laughs> using an Adobe product, there are fantastic um, perspective corrections in, uh, in Adobe, so you don't have to go out and buy yourself the... Or, well, maybe you do need to go out and buy yourself the expensive Nikon um, <laughs> tilt shift lens. The tilt shift, yes. I was yes. going to say, because yeah. you can do it in the Adobe product, so we've shared that idea. However, in the reportage category, you're not allowed to. It's no. what you see. Mm. So, you know, yeah, that's uh, another element of it. But good luck on the weekend. And, uh, you know, again, a well worthy image of the final 10. Next image, please. And let's start with you, Robin. Look at him. I, I love the direction of the nets <coughs> here. And uh, if you take a closer up, look at him. He's got his mouth open, yelling, help, help. And I, for me, that's very simple, strong graphic, you know, that really uh, attracts me to this picture. Mel? Yeah, it's a really strong message, um, but with a beautiful abstract design as well. So we're drawn with the nets right into where that, that, that fish is. Um, so the composition is really well, well done. Adam, you had a comment. Oh, it's just about the, the, the journey and almost the restriction. Yeah, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So the story is there and everything cutting through, yeah, even through cutting through the eye, I think is sort of this restriction. And the red really emphasises that sort of danger. You know, it, it's, it's, it's in you know, real trouble here. So well executed. You should have listened. Stay away from the light. <laughs> Congratulations. Good luck on the weekend. Next image, please. And we'll start with Harriet. Yeah, I love this image. It's so beautiful and tender and delicate. And I think with reportage and documentary, we often find ourselves looking at big scenes of drama and war and catastrophe. And I think it's just as important to show intimate scenes where um, it's just of everyday life and of culture and of people. And the um, emotion on this man's face or this person's face is just really evocative and beautiful. And yeah, I, I really connect with this image. No. Thank you. Um, the, I think there's this, it, that there are a lot of questions um, that, that you kind of uh, start to wonder about. You know, what is the story here? Um, the, the way that the, the person is shaped uh, or lying in there with the sheets. Um, it, there is a story and, and, and I think um, we're left to wonder. Uh, perhaps what that is, but I think the subtlety ar around it with the colouring is um, it, there's a sense of peace. Comment? Yeah, there's a real restraint about how this has been handled as well. The, you know, the figure doesn't have to be the brightest subject, and we get a sense of this, you know, where the light direction is coming from. And I think it matches the mood of, of you know, it's a pensive moment. It doesn't need to, to really jump out at us. It, it's up to us to bring that interpretation to what we're seeing. So, you know, that, that it, it gives us that colour temperature and that evocative mood that, it was, you know, a bit of restraint gives us. Cool. Next image, please. Robin. 
so many layers in here. You, your face, your view comes, you know, starts at the beginning and then just keeps rolling back and back and back until you've got this symbol of, single object of beauty right in the middle there. I think it's beautifully constructed. Tim. Yeah, just hanging the, uh, the image with the sole survivor in amongst this, uh, this torched landscape. It's, um, it's uh, very dramatic and lovely sense of depth just with the rich blacks in the foreground and uh, drifting back to the soft greys in the distance. How are you? Yeah, it's a stunning image. It's um, Again, it's got that subtlety. It's not a big banger. It's um, There's a lot going on with the story, though, I think. Um, it looks to me a bit like backburning or something. I really want to read the article that this goes with, and I want to see the rest of the project. So, um, yeah, very intrigued by this image. And good comments, because that also relates to what reportage is about, to sort of add parts to a story, fill in the gaps the words may not cover and so on. Absolutely. Congratulations. Good luck on Sunday. Next image, please. <coughs> Adam. Yeah, look, a, a, a great sense of, of place and a the, the moment happening within the place. You, we get a real sense of the, the feel, that late afternoon sun. You know, he's you know, at the peak sort of moment, sort of hanging in that air. Everything leads us into the middle, even all those buildings. So, you know, well placed, well, well positioned and just a, a good example of a documentary reportage image. Good example of airtime. <laughs> well. Well, I just think the uh, the bottom ground, uh, the foreground there, it's kind of uh, lit up like a hazard uh, situation, which is exactly what he's going into. Um, so I think it's very clever. Will he stick it, won't he? <laughs> <laughs> and again, another top ten finalists in the reportage category sponsored by Adobe. Let's have a look at the next image, please. Robin. Very soft, this... Um the, uh, there's so much going on in this picture as well that you, although you're taken to the brightest spot, which is in the middle with the character, you, your eye tends to wander around and around and look at the other elements that dominate the photo as well. Harriet? Yeah, it's um, quite amazing. It's a very, it's a, actually a very quiet moment, even though there's obviously been a lot of drama that's happened around it, and just seeing this you know, solo figure and you can really, even though it's just the back of him, by the body language and the way he's holding his arms and, and the rest of the scene around, you can really sense what that person's going through. Adam? And I think there's a tendency sometimes in this image that you might want it to, to sort of get rid of the distracting elements or the elements that are around here, but stuff like the, the speed sign, like there's that speed that's indicating that's normally, you know, 60 kilometres an hour is quite quick. And now it's, you're not going 60 kilometres an hour through there. It's a very still moment, like you say. And I think that's a really deliberate inclusion that, you know, sometimes it might be seen as a distraction, but I think it really adds to the story and the surrounds, you know, really tells you where you are and what's going on. There's a lot of information and it is a good example of a reportage type of image. Next image, please. And Harriet, we'll start with you. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, this is uh, wonderful. It's really capturing the moment, isn't it? The, the photographer's really in there. I really like the way the photographer's sort of present there. It doesn't feel like they're, um, you know, taking the photo from the outside. They're invested in this group, um, the winning the winning moment. For, um, and, yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. It, the, all those expressions just add to it. Yeah. Mel, you're a portrait extraordinaire. Uh, and knowing the subject, uh, um, you know, a, a big teal candidate, uh, surrounded by family mostly, um, it's uh, such a precise moment because uh, we didn't really know what the teal movement was going to do in this in this previous in this last election, um, and the faces of that teal movement. Um, uh, you know, were reported on so much, uh, but to see that success come through uh, in this defining moment, um, yeah, with it's well family captured. as well, rather than exactly. just like uh, um, yeah. supporters or volunteers That's or the, right. the office, it's yeah, with family. Absolutely. Adam? And it's an example, I guess, of how that, you know, so often we see these sort of images in black and white because that's kind of how we, we think. But the colour is so important to this image because we know how it is. And it's well handled. Like, this could have been something that a lot of media were there to see. Um, and you, you can see the direct flash, the, the, the sort of flash and stuff. But it's still very crisp, very clear. You know, it's, it's very, very well handled. The, there's no distracting shadows or anything that really stop you from getting in and seeing all that expression. Excellent. Next image, please, and good luck on Sunday. Robin. 
Lovely. Uh, how is she still standing? I don't know. <laughs> that is just what keeps me in the picture, <clears throat> just wondering at her stance there. Tim. I was struck by the similarity of the, uh, the previous concert shot, and it's they're, they're framed very similarly. You've got the same dynamic diagonal of the body, and you've got the, uh, the support um, bass player up in the top left corner, so it seems to be a format for concert photography. <laughs> <laughs> Harriet? Yeah, I mean, it's a great dramatic shot. It's capturing all the elements of the drama of the moment and the big, the big um, you know, pinnacle moment in the song. It's, yeah, good fun. And I think the extra, the richness of the blacks and the, the contrast in this image adds to the sort of heightened drama and the high energy of, a, a, aspect of it. Next image, please. Well done. And that's the reportage category, so well done, everybody. Congratulations to those ten finalists. Good luck on the weekend when they get announced as the, the winner and the runner-ups. And we are in a moment going to move to the next category, which our cheat sheet tells me is travel. So we're going to take about a three or four minute break and we'll hook into that very shortly. So we'll hear some words from our amazing and fabulous sponsors. As a female athlete, I feel such a balance between being fierce and feminine. And it's such a powerful feeling. The initial feeling that I get when I touch the ocean and, and the water, and you know, I feel it on my skin. How do I describe it? It's just the most beautiful feeling in the world. My training needs to change. I need to be put in situations where, where I'm feeling uncomfortable and, and that's where you really learn to grow. You push yourself into these zones that are something different. Home to me feels like comfort and happiness, sunshine, all of the things that make me smile. In these creative outlets, like surfing and photography and music, there's no right or wrong. It's just everybody's individual. Everybody has a unique style and you know when you've captured a moment because it feels right for you. As human beings, photographs and stories, memories, that's all we really have. So it's awesome to be able to capture them in, in the most quality way. We're Tim and Nadine. We are wedding photographers based in Wellington, New Zealand. Using Studio Ninja has allowed us to reduce the amount of time that we spend doing the stuff that we hate the most in this business, which really is the paperwork. Studio Ninja gives us back time. Instead of spending time filling in spreadsheets, we can be off uh, taking pictures, creating art, I don't know, relaxing, making puzzles. Making puzzles. <laughs> As image makers, we need to look around. We need to see the world. We need to go to museums. We need to go to galleries so we can understand the use of color and light and shadow. In that respect, everything needs to be considered. If there's a rule for the images that we're trying to make, they shouldn't just appeal to architects. They should be images that when framed, your grandmother falls in love with it and wants to hang it on her wall. So the purpose of our image making is not to recreate a photograph. We have the ability to play with light, to play with atmosphere, 
that potentially makes that image more visually engaging. This is our perception of reality. There's an understanding of the colour within a composition. So that colour palette is often driven by the colour in a brick or the timber or the floor. The image in its entirety needs to harmonise. As well as photography, there are painters that we look at. The way that they have painted with colour and tone and light, they're in museums. And it kind of occurred to me that we are recording the architecture of our time. We want to celebrate those images by framing them and put them on a wall. So in years to come, could you have a museum where there are digital paintings that people want to come and visit? A song can be broken down into different elements. They all play a part in the composition of that soundtrack. There'll be something about that song that makes you want to play that song over and over again. And maybe each time you'll pick up on different elements. If we make a successful image, you'll want to look at it over and over again. Maybe the more that you look at it, you will then pick up the fact that there's leaves on the ground, or there's dapple shadow in the corner, or there's a figure in the window. So there's thought into every aspect. to read my lips for so long. We'll turn it off, mute, 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 mute point, mute, and we'll carry on. So in the travel category, images should be authentically or should authentic authentically portray areas, people, culture, customs, and history, and a sense of place can be important. Travel is not limited to other lands or countries and may include photographs of domestic origin even as much as your own street. Composite images are allowed, provided post-production techniques do not override or detract from the legitimacy of the subject and or destination. So that's what we're doing here. And again, thanks to the team uh, down at Atkin, Atkins Lab in Adelaide, um, Paul Atkins and his team, wonderful supporters as always, huge supporters in South Australia and around Australia of the industry. So let's have a look at our first travel category, uh, travel image, I should say. And we're waiting on it to come up so our judges can, or our jurors can see it. Just get you to switch it to the front screen. There we go. And let's start with Amanda. Well, I think when we're looking at travel, we, want, we really know a great image when it takes us somewhere. And this image really does um, take us on a journey. Um, I love the interaction between those two travellers. Um, give us a little bit of a storyline. And just by looking... We're looking at two different scenes, really. We're looking at what's within the um, carriage. So that's telling the story of the journey which um, and the food on the table and all those um, nitty-grits of 
nitty gritty bits of what it really is to travel, which I enjoy. It um, gives us a, a atmosphere of what's going on. But then we look through the window and we see exactly where we're traveling through. So that I think that's a um, really great achievement. Uh, Robin. Yeah, this is lovely to me. This is more about the journey rather than the destination. You know, and you've got those kids sitting on the top bunks, swinging their feet, a little bit bored, waiting and waiting. But it tells so much about the, um, you know, the journey itself. Mel? It's almost like a reversed framing. Um, mm. It's like a portrait, um, which I think is, uh, for, for a travel photo or an image, you really want it to be uh, memorable uh, a keepsake, so to speak, uh, and uh, to really evoke um, the memories or, or the feelings that you had on, on a journey. Uh, and I think this image will do that for years to come. Adam? And just really quickly, the use of the colour and the warmth in the image to sort of take us in various places that we want highlighted, even from the background to the, the colour temperature is really well handled. Yeah, congratulations on making the top ten. Good luck on the weekend. Next image, please. Harriet. Yeah, this is wonderful. It's a 3D image, I think. Um, and just there's, I mean, it's so hard to see on that screen there, but there's so much going on here, that real symmetrical, in, in, it's in a cathedral by the looks of it. And so really that 3D image really lends itself to that because you can really see that sort of dome and all that artwork and, and the tiling all the way around. And then, you know, as you look closer, you can see all these little interactions with all the people around there. So. Really, really interesting, different way of getting a travel image for sure. Robin? Uh, so this, this image, um, the Pantheon in Rome, is just beautiful because it's an overwhelming building to be in, not only in its space and its shape and its light, its colour, but the amount of intricate detail throughout all the marbles, you know, above you and below you, all around you on the floor. So seeing it from this perspective, it's made, it's actually simplified it for me and the leading out the door just allows me to go somewhere rather um, and what I'm enjoying is it's a completely different perspective on an already beautiful place. Amanda, anything to add? Yeah, just that um, single figure there in the doorway and um, that you're attracted to, really, like that. Mm. Yeah, great use of reflection and all sorts of things. The ge graphics and geometry is incredible. Mm. Well done. Next image, please. <coughs> okay, uh, Mel. This statue looks like it's about to fly onto that cloud and fly away. <laughs> um, but it's an excellent uh, um, uh, perspective on what looks like a blue sky day in, in, that, uh, in that city, uh, well captured. Harriet? Yeah, very clean and crisp and um, simple, and yet there's a little story there as well of that, that uh, statue interacting with that cloud, so good fun. Adam? It's, it, it's certainly a play on the textures, the, the harshness of the light and the softness of the cloud. And you know, well, it, it's a very simple image, but a very effective in communicating those, those sort of atmosphere that we've seen. What all travellers want, blue skies with a few puffy clouds. Yeah. <laughs> Next image, please. Robin? Very evocative. Look at him looking out to sea. It's beautiful. I love the framing of the, um, the trees on this very simple image. Um, and the, you know the steps going towards the sand, and I just wonder what he's looking at. What's what's the surf that he's checking out there? I was going to say he's looking <laughs> at the surf. Harriet. Yeah, it's lovely. It makes you, I think, you know, anyone growing up near the beach in Australia has certainly got a sense of um, nostalgia looking at this image. It's just lovely. You can really, I just want to get in that water. And the balance of the image is beautiful with the trees and the signposts and the man. And yeah, it's been very well executed. Adam? And just and even in, in something as simple as the pose of the man is mirrored in those trees, it's almost like the trees are having a look out to see what it's like today as well. Just, you know, just little elements like that really enhance these sort of situations. It certainly has a spirit of place, doesn't it? Next image, please. Amanda? Okay, well, I think there's a great um, use of colour here. This has got this bright background and um, obviously she's taking a photo of the beautiful sunflower and then um, and the contrast between um, her in her um, in the black and, and which is also in the iPhone case, phone case cover she's using. So... Um, we just got that one peek at her eye, which we sort of draws you in, and then you're wondering, because we see the back of this sunflower, what is she looking at? Mm. So there's an interest there. Thanks, Adam. 
Thank you, Adam. I think there's an interesting play here on the, the two sort of very small lenses that we're looking through the world here. It's it's that you know the the dominant feature for me is the lens of that that phone. It's the sort of the little opening, looking through the little opening to this massive, this expanse of a flower. It's 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 a really interesting narrative that's been shown. Yeah, it's it brought that element of culture in, but in a completely different way. Hmm, well done. And again, I like the impact of the colour there as well. Next image, and well done. Mel? Well, we're really drawn into to the, that focal point there, but as we come out to have a look at this scene, you need to wonder what the two people are doing as well. So are they lovers? Are they tourists? Is there a proposal happening? Um, and, and I guess a lot of people gravitate to New York and, and you know, to go and see the statue. Um, for all different reasons, so it's really nice to include those people in the frame. Thank you, Mel. Uh, Harriet. Yeah, it's sort of it's the black and white lends itself to that as well. It's uh, the silhouettes in the front and the, you know, highlighting the Liberty herself in the back. Uh, it feels very classic and iconic, and uh, I think the photographers made good use of the monochrome there to kind of accentuate that. Adam? I kind of almost wonder, like, if you asked me to describe the figures in the front, statuesque is kind of what I, I get. And so I wonder if almost there's almost an ambivalence about they're, they're very still. There's not, there's not a lot of emotion from them. And, you know, perhaps it's so cliche that, oh, yeah, there's the Statue of Liberty where it's, you know, it's this amazing thing. But that's, that's what I get out of this image as well, is a, a very different viewpoint on something well photographed. Yeah, good comments. Well observed. Good luck to the photographer for Sunday with what is obviously a great image and made a final ten. Next image, please. It's a lovely. This this is a lovely. I'm presuming this is in Bhutan or somewhere. It looks like that to me. But it's just a lovely landscape view, and you know the shape of the buildings. I'm sorry, I'm just struggling a little bit to see that with the with the lighting here. Um, it, it's evocative of a journey and a, a a large, vast landscape for of discovery. Thanks, Robin. Harriet. Yeah, it's a very, um, you know, very classic travel picture and um, I think we all want to go to this place right now. It's it's a great scene. I, I think there's a, it looks like there's a sort of village down below the one the one house that's sort of up up on the mountain there and, you know, it gives you that sense of kind of this one house and the village down below and I want to get round that rock and see what else is there. Adam, any alternatives that you could see that could be done to strengthen this image even further? Although it obviously it's a great image. It, into it, the top it really does lead you down into the frame. I wonder if, if perhaps it, uh, perhaps playing with the cropper tiny little bit from the top will sort of further get you further down through into that frame. It's quite heavy at the top, which gives a sense of mood and atmosphere. But I, I think as well, there's there's probably uh, lots of different crops that might get you even further into that story. But it's, it's a lovely you know, um, representation of, of what you see in there. Yeah, well said. Next image, please. Mel? Decisive moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a capture. Um, there's such symmetry there. It's, they're almost identical. Um, and I, I'm not sure how they're doing that. But uh, uh, it's very clever. And I love the, the colour that's, um, that's popping with the red against the blue sky. Uh, it's very well seen. Amanda? Yeah, the first, when, I, when it first popped up, I thought, fun, you know, everyone, and I think it's a strong emotion straight away. Um, there's, there's a lot of drama happening there, like you're wondering why they're, what, what might happen <laughs> next. <laughs> it looks very dangerous, but also a lot of fun. Harriet? Yeah, same with me, fun. <laughs> That's what, And I love the graphic look of the image as well. It's really bright. The reds pop, the blue's so rich. Um, and also there's a cultural aspect as well. They're, they're, these are people hanging off a rope. I want to know what, what they're doing, what their culture they're from, what they're celebrating. I want to know more. So it leads me into that. Well done. Top ten, travel category. Good luck on Sunday. Next image, please. Robin? Yeah, I can see this one better. The, um, this is lovely, lovely, strong, simple graphic. You know, the use of the arch with the light in the background and the, uh, the detail in the foreground leading straight through to the cross. You know, it creates just a strong, simple message. 
Adam? Yeah, this is the real, I get the sense of the pilgrimage, you know, coming to a place there and the cross is such an evocative symbol and it's it's so, it's almost a little translucent in the middle of the frame and yet you sort of get an idea, you see the, sim, the tiny little figures in the background, so people have already reached there and these people are trying to get there, I feel like, you know, you're part of this crowd that's really moving to a place and I think that's makes a successful travel image that you get a sense of where you are and where you want to be. Yeah, thanks Adam. Mel, anything, to, oh, Amanda, you had something to add? Yeah, I just think um, good use of repetition with the, the the archways of the domes that are mirrored in the umbrellas as well. Mm. Nice touch. Yep, yeah, nice touch. All right, well, before we go to the other one, I'm going to ask Robin to take a little seat and uh, perhaps hand the microphone to her husband. Tim? Keep everybody on their toes. Mm -hmm. And we'll have the next image, please. And guess who gets to talk? Tim. <laughs> Well, plenty of dynamic leading lines and things on the side of that. I'm not sure, what is it, a viaduct or, um, or whatever, but it's a, a, a unique place. So, um, you know, talking as a landscape photographer, it's an interesting place that I might want to go and uh, discover. So there again, it's taking me somewhere, expanding my horizon, so well done. Uh, how are you? Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, there's a kind of this viaduct and then um, a sort of palm tree and I think it looks like there's another building on the left there and I, I almost feel like I think um, I would like the crop to be just a bit different so that I can kind of see a bit more of what's going on because what, what's here is really interesting to me and it's, it's lovely but yeah, I kind of want to see a bit more. Mm. Mel, anything to add? No, just the harmony uh, really between the colours in the water uh, and that wall work really well. Yeah, I particularly like the co colour harmony and I think the perspective on something so large, mm. and I think it is a viaduct or something similar, and uh, you know, shooting it from such a low uh, perspective gives a sense of the awesomeness of that structure. Yeah, scale. Next image, thanks. Oh. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the travel category. Again, we want to... Uh, pass on our thanks and gratitude to the team at Atkins Lab in Adelaide for sponsoring that category. We're going to take a three minute break and we will be back with a category which is going to be, anybody tell me quick? Uh, nature. It is going to be nature <laughs> and wildlife, there you go. Nature and wildlife, so we'll be back very shortly. A couple of messages from our sponsors. Thank you. Hola amigos, I'm Andre Rosaliff, worldwide art and fashion photographer. This time I visited Spain. My schedule consisted of various tasks in Valencia and Barcelona, including my workshop and editorial for a magazine. Everywhere I need to be able to achieve an artistic result. I like it then flash using to achieve an overall harmony with natural light. My favorite actor boxes created delicate illumination, in this case it is 88 centimeters. workshop in Valencia I demonstrated the possibility of artistic photography after sunset. It was almost dark, so I will tell you more about the lighting scheme. On the left is an 8200 Pro Flash with a warm conversion filter. On the right is another 8200 Pro Flash with a cold conversion filter. I use it to change the color temperature a bit, not a blue tint, this is not a blue gel filter. Both flashes with a Fresnel head and diffusers, those we achieve the color volume. In Barcelona a more difficult task awaited me. 28 dresses, a quick change of locations, unpredictable weather and unplanned situations, wake up at 6 in the morning. I always have to be ready to shoot in any conditions. This is a conditional simple classification depending on the character of natural light. For this task I had two main tools if we're talking about light modifiers. First, it is a reflector. The sun is a key light or backlight. The general nature of the light is a hot sun. An octabox when the sun is a field light. Cloudy, the character of the natural light is soft or the model and the most of the skin in the shadow. My task is to achieve harmony. So, the first case, the sun as a key light or backlight. Often I use 8200 Pro with reflector. Another option, just flash without a light modifier, but you need a lot of power. The second case, 
cloudy. The character of natural light is soft, our model and the most of the skin is in the shadow. The sun is a fill light. I use the octobox, in this case 88 centimeters. It is worth adding that sometimes a large octobox with a diffuser a large distance from the flash to the model for a full body frame require more power. This is a great universal tool for many tasks. Thank you for watching. I wish you a great inspiration. Edition Etching Rag is really a beautiful paper with a distinct texture and grain to the paper surface, but at the same time it holds image detail really well. And that's when I choose Edition Etching, when, when I sort of want a little bit of both, some grain and some texture. It's not as smooth as printmaking rag or Velen Museum rag, for example. Certainly not as smooth as Rag Photographique, but it also holds image detail really well, has great black density, great contrast. Um, it's a 100% cotton rag paper, no OBAs, of course. Um, and it just feels really nice to hold and touch in your hand. And again, the, the smoothness and the grain of the paper is really nice. And I think it just works well in a wide variety of images, a very versatile paper, um, landscapes, nature, portraits, black and white, abstracts, reproductions even. Um, I particularly like it on some of my landscape images where, for example, I might have an area of the image that's really smooth and I want the grain to add a certain dimension to that part of the image. But at the same time, I have a lot of detail and I want the paper to hold that image detail and sharpness really well.
The one thing I didn't realise getting into this career was how much time you'd have to spend at your desk. Emails, client bookings, following up on leads, sending out quotes. This stuff takes time. And I remember the time when everything changed. Hey, Ben. No, 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 no worries. I'll, yeah, I'll be there real soon. See you in a sec. Yeah, that was me when I first started. Hey, Sarah, thanks for calling me back. Okay, I'll see you in an hour. Converting inquiries into bookings, sending quotes and contracts, keeping track of all my shoots, it's now all taken care of with Studio Ninja. Smile. With Studio Ninja, I never have to worry about following up on leads, chasing payments, or missing shoots. Fine, beautiful. As I said, I'm a photographer, not an administrator. So if you want to spend more time doing what you love, let Studio Ninja help. Welcome back. You're at the Australian Photographic Prize live streaming if you're out there. And of course, if you're in here, you know exactly where you are. You're privileged to be in the presence of such greatness. These wonderful <laughs> photographers who are sharing their knowledge and their experience and passion for the wonderful art of making images. This next category is Nature and Wildlife, it's sponsored by our good friends at Wacom. Many people would know Wacom provides the tablets, the pens, and help us to become very precise in the way we edit our images, incredible tools, and I'm sure most of this panel, if not all, would at some time have used one if they don't have one already. Images in this category should be and should show the beauty of nature or wildlife captured in their natural habitat. Only single capture images, with the exception of HDR, created through focus stacking, time exposure and stitched images are permitted. Images must not contain human or man-made elements. Wildlife entries must not, not portray any form of organised or intentional cruelty. Just a quick one on post-production. Post-production techniques such as dodging and burning may be used to enhance the image as long as the authenticity of the original scene is retained. Mm -hmm. Colour images must appear natural. Images may also be entered as black and white convergence, com convergence, conversions. Techniques that remove in-camera elements such as dust spots, digital noise and film scratches are allowed. With the exception of cropping, the addition, removal, relocation or replacement of pictorial elements is not permitted. So nature and wildlife, let's have a little look. First image, please. All right, let's start with you, Tim. Don't you love this? So graphically, nice strong diagonal with everything balanced around the... Uh, uh, the tusk sitting out there in splendid isolation, and then you've got the little snuggling bird. What a story. Mel? I think what makes this is the eyes. So not only of the bird, um, but the animal it's resting on uh, just looks, looks really content. Um, so I think it's really well, well timed. Robin, you're itching to say oh, something. Oh, I absolutely adore this image. Look at him, the warthog's little lazy eye, you know. He's just not even concerned and the dear little bird snuggling in. The story is so strong in this picture. Anybody else? Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> yeah, very strong image. And again, as we've said earlier today, making the top ten of any category is a feat in itself. So congratulations to all of these finalists. And we're going to have a little chat with the rest of them as well. So let's have a look and good luck on Sunday with this one. Uh, let's start with you, Amanda. It's a very dramatic image. Um, the light, really great use of light and um, just great um, depth there between exactly what they want us to look at. I'm not exactly sure what it is. <laughs> I think it's a moth sitting on... Some, yeah, uh, okay. uh, some a moth. I would say some something. sort of insect. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, oh, sorry. I'm just gonna, that's part of the intrigue, isn't it? You've got to figure out what this thing is because you don't usually see them like that. And that's the revealing part is, um, is, is so much fun in this category of seeing things in a different way. Yeah. Amanda, did you, sorry, did you have... Yeah, and, I, and because it's sitting on this green, I'm assuming, leaf and this lovely curve that's coming across the image and then mirrored by those wings. Are they wings or antenna? I can't see. Yeah. Who knows? Sorry, I'd like a closer look. As said, that's part of the enjoyment, isn't it? What part am I reveal. looking at? <laughs> Incredible. And you know, one of the things about, particularly about wildlife, is when we start looking at animals up close, macro, 
when it's something we don't get to normally see at that scale. And we're thinking, what am I actually looking at? And that makes it quite amazing. Harriet, comment? Oh, I just think it's wonderful. And just as you just exactly said, Tony, it's just wonderful seeing something that we don't see in detail that much in such close detail. And so that just makes it so interesting. Yeah. Uh, well done. Congratulations on making the top 10. Next image, please. Robin. Look at him. He's so curious. He's come right up to the screen, to the author's, the photographer's screen, and, um, and you know, pushed his nose right in there. This moment is beautifully captured because the swishing of the sand down the bottom and all the sediment in the water, you know, it's really hard to get a nice, close, clear image. So well done to the photographer. Amanda? Yeah, just it, it's like it got a sparkle to it. That, and I'm almost reminded like of a galaxy or the, the night sky. Tim? I think that's what's uh, attractive about it, though, too, because it gives um, the depth in the water. You get the real sense of a, a viscous sort of thing that the animal's in, where if it was clear water, you wouldn't get that sen same sense of, uh, of presence for the, for the animal. No? I think this image captures perfectly the playfulness of seals who, they're so inquisitive. Um, they, they get in really close, and they do actually want you to interact and play. So, yeah, it's fun. It's good. As a diver, I can really relate to yeah. the narrative here of the, that they come out of nowhere. Yeah. And literally, this image is almost, the tail's almost disappeared, but the face is in your face. So, yeah, well done. Top ten. Awesome. Next image, please. Harriet. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's just really well photographed and delicate and really um, the light coming through those petals is beautiful with the lovely, um, you know, the uh, contour of the petals as well, really giving a natural kind of uh, border to that, the beautiful uh, petals. Um, yeah, really lovely, really delicate. Tim? All, all the action is in the top half of the image, isn't it? And then this simple little uh, stalk running down to the bottom. So, you know, it's a great way of... Um, of leading you through the image and making use of the whole the, uh, the whole picture. Amanda? Yeah, it's just um, so peaceful, calming, like the translucent, the light, beautiful. Robin, maybe a quick comment on the colour palette? Very soothing. <laughs> <laughs> so you could always have it on your wall, 10. couldn't you? <laughs> Let's have a look at the next image. Thank you. Mel? So, a beautiful abstract with those lines moving through the image just drawing our eyes up towards that lovely orange colour that, yeah, just complements the rest of it so beautifully. Well done. Tim, I have a feeling you might know what this image is about, so can you tell yeah, us a bit so, more? Um, I'm, I'm taking this as a, as a salt flat and uh, the footprints are actually emu. Mm. So, uh, but I love the twist of them crossing. All right, mm -hmm. so if they were, ran parallel off, um, but just the cross at the top where they're going over each other's pathway, I think just adds something to the story. Harriet, anything to add? Yeah, I just think it's really fun. The photographer's playing with the idea of nature and animals, and I just think, you know, although there's no animal in it, that we're very much seeing an animal's effect on, on the uh, terrain it's in, and I just think that's really lovely when you see photographers kind of trying to think outside the box of it. Hmm. Good. Next image, please. Amanda. We've got beautiful light coming in, um, just lighting up those delicate feathers and um, that translucency coming right through the wing um, and obvious this emotion of flight, of taking off, of, you know, this soaring. It's beautiful. Tim? All those poor bugs, look at the feast. <laughs> 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 Who's next? <Yeah. laughs> and isn't that the strength of the wildlife image, the narrative yeah. that we mm. can read into this picture? That is quite aesthetically you know, yeah. beautiful, but at the same time has a very real story to it. That's right. Mm. Lunch. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well? Oh, the feast was uh, the perfect word to describe this, um, and it's a smorgasbord by the look of it. Yeah, um, yeah well, well positioned, well, well, well seen. And, and, you know, just... They become like stars, like the other one with the uh, with the seal, don't they? So, uh. Harriet, not easy technically, or as easy as it might look. Yeah. Can I, yeah, so that, sorry, I was just going to add, because the, the photographer here has shown great skill with his camera and his settings and his choice of shutter speed to actually manage in with such dark background to get that luminosity and bring out those details in the bird. Yeah, and still actually keep a little bit of like emotion in the bird as well. Like yeah. I think I think that's really beautiful in nature when you can see like that bird looks like it's in ecstasy, doesn't it? Yeah. Just just about to go and have dinner. <laughs> well done, congratulations. Next image, please. 
Uh, Mel? Such amazing symmetry to, to be captured in the wild uh, and perfectly placed in, a, in, in the crop that the photographer's chosen. It's, uh, it sets it off beautifully. Amanda? Yeah, great action, like, um, like Mel said, to capture that, um, both flying through the water, um, through the air, above the water at the same time. Great work. Harriet? Yeah, and yeah, it's fun, isn't it? They, it looks like those two penguins are just having a ball and they're having, yeah, they're having fun and uh, yeah, I love seeing that as well. I love the 45 degree nature of the dynamic, mm -hmm. you know, that gives us that sense of arm, energy and drama and movement mm -hmm. and it's taking us back. So as we read across left to right, but it keeps pushing us back, which is almost that uh, hip hopping of penguins going through mm -hmm. the water. So yes, a lot of, lot of hidden uh, elements of that image that make it strong. Might take a, uh, get someone to have a little break. So mm -hmm. Amanda, maybe you can have a little break and uh, we'll get Adam to come back and help us with the last few. And we'll have another image. Thanks, congratulations to that image maker. Tim. A really strong sense of light, isn't it? Just the light revealing um, and uh, the way that the water is just uh, simply cascading and delicately flowing in the opposite direction. So you've got the light coming from the top left and the water going from the top right, and then the detail in the foreground, what's not to love? Adam. Yeah, and it's, and it's amazing you have that sort of the you know, convergence of the light of the light and the water, which you imagine where the, where the water hits the rock is quite an explosive. Yet it's such a calmness about what we, you know, it's it's a very evocative image. It's touchable. It's feel you you're really transported in there. And then you've got that little black dot to mark the spot. It's uh, mm. of the rock. Fantastic. How are you? Yeah, it's beautiful. It reminds me of a dark room print. It's like the the. Uh, whites are really shiny and silvery and the blacks are really dark, but they're still all holding there. It's, eth you know, ethereal almost. It's very beautiful. You make a, a, a beautiful print. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. Top ten. Next image, please. Uh, Adam? It's, it's a very striking, again, we've got the simplicity of just seeing all the details and really nothing else go on to it. You've got the nice, sharp, repetitive lines, I think, which really point you into the, the focal. So it's, it's, it's very effectively communicated through its design. Mel? Just uh, excellent sepia tones throughout the image. It really lends itself to the simplicity of the composition and the detail really shines through. Robin? Yeah, I agree with what the others have said. The simplicity of the palette, the colour palette, just allows us to concentrate on the beautiful detail in the plant. I love the, the organic gesture, just the, the mm. curve and the sort of nice soft bend, which actually adds to that suppleness and softness as well. Uh, congratulations, top ten. Next image, please. Oh, it's wonderful. It's, um, you know, it takes a lot of skill to get something so small in flight, uh, landing on this plant, having a feed, um, and just seeing almost all the feathers in the, in the butterfly's wings. Just really, really gorgeous. Um, good composition. I kind of like that it's slightly off to the left a little bit, so the butterfly's like nicely centered. It's almost got a, um, yeah, there's, I think there's a bit of a vignette on it anyway, but there's a kind of a natural vignette going on as well. And yeah, really, really well executed. No. I'm just really enjoying the, the little insect underneath mimicking mm. the moth. It's sensational. Yeah. Adam, good. Tim, good. Yeah, I think the um, uh, usually it's, you know, you don't want to see the vignette, but I think in this instance it's actually adding to the image. Uh, and the lovely earthy coloured palette just kind of is complementary to what we're looking at. Well done. Next image, please. Robin. Love their beaks. Just look at them. Um, you know, they're in full force action at the moment and the lovely juxtaposition and placement of each other beaks for me, I feel like that's the strength on this photo there. Tim. Yeah, that's that decisive moment, isn't it? But, you know, very simple uh, geometry in the image too, which I think just anchors all the action. So just that overarching simplicity in the, uh, in the composition and then you can add the detail into that. Adam? And technically, I think as well, with such long, with very long lenses, sometimes you get what you get only a little bit of what's in focus. There's not, you don't have a lot of depth to play with. But we've we've got everything covered here. We want it's you know it's very very sharp all the way through where it needs to be and nowhere else. Mm. And uh, yeah, slightly same. Well done. Next image, thanks. And that brings us to the end of. The, land, uh, the wildlife and nature, that was awesome, guys. Um, some incredible images this morning. Um, we've seen a great uh, selection of images. We see why 
those p the images made the top ten of each category, and mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there waiting to find out who's, who the actual winners are and receiving some amazing prizes from our sponsors, including this category, which was Wacom or Wacom, depending which country you come from. Uh, we're going to take a, a break for lunch for about half an hour. We'll be back with, a, I think we're doing some student work after lunch, and then later on today we'll be doing the creative category and giving feedback on that. So again, thank you to our incredible panel there. They've done a great job, including Amanda or Boots over here. And um, thank you to our audience. Thanks to the guys up the back and all the, the crew floating around the room, keeping everybody honest and keeping us all turned on. Yeah. Uh, Take a break. Thanks, Thanks so much. Tony. We'll see you back in yeah. half an hour. And in the see meantime, there'll be some lovely video and some messages from sponsors for you. As a female athlete, I feel such a balance between being fierce and feminine. And it's such a powerful feeling. The initial feeling that I get when I touch the ocean and, and the water and you know I feel it on my skin, how do I describe it? It's just the most beautiful feeling in the world. My training needs to change. I need to be put in situations where, where I'm feeling uncomfortable and, and that's where you really learn to grow. You push yourself into these zones that are something different. Home to me feels like comfort and happiness, sunshine, all of the things that make me smile. In these creative outlets, like surfing and photography and music, there's no right or wrong. It's just everybody's individual. Everybody has a unique style. And you know when you've captured a moment because it feels right for you. As human beings, photographs and stories, memories, that's all we really have. So it's awesome to be able to capture them in, in the most quality way. We're Tim and Nadine. We are wedding photographers based in Wellington, New Zealand. Using Studio Ninja has allowed us to reduce the amount of time that we spend doing the stuff that we hate the most in this business, which really is the paperwork. Studio Ninja gives us back time. Instead of spending time filling in spreadsheets, we can be off uh, taking pictures, creating art, I don't know, relaxing, making puzzles. Making puzzles. <laughs>
as well as photography, there are painters that we look at. The way that they have painted with colour and tone and light, they're in museums. And it kind of occurred to me that we are recording the architecture of our time. We want to celebrate those images by framing them and put them on a wall. So in years to come, could you have a museum where there are digital paintings that people want to come and visit? A song can be broken down into different elements. They all play a part in the composition of that soundtrack. There'll be something about that song that makes you want to play that song over and over again. And maybe each time you'll pick up on different elements. If we make a successful image, you'll want to look at it over and over again. Maybe the more that you look at it, you will then pick up the fact that there's leaves on the ground, or there's dapple shadow in the corner, or there's a figure in the window. So there's thought into every aspect.
Hola amigos, I'm Andre Rosalev, worldwide art and fashion photographer. This time I visited Spain. My schedule consisted of various tasks in Valencia and Barcelona, including my workshop and editorial for a magazine. Everywhere I need to be able to achieve an artistic result. I like it than flash using to achieve an overall harmony with natural light. My favorite actor boxes created delicate illumination. In this case, it is 88 centimeters. In my workshop in Valencia, I demonstrated the possibility of artistic photography after sunset. It was almost dark, so I will tell you more about the lighting scheme. On the left is an 8200 Pro Flash with a warm conversion filter. On the right is another 8200 Pro Flash with a cold conversion filter. I use it to change the color temperature a bit, not a blue tint, this is not a blue gel filter. Both flashes with a Fresnel head and diffusers, those we achieve the color volume. In Barcelona a more difficult task awaited me. 28 dresses, a quick change of locations, unpredictable weather and unplanned situations, wake up at 6 in the morning. I always have to be ready to shoot in any conditions. This is a conditional simple classification depending on the character of natural light. For this task I had two main tools if we're talking about light modifiers. First, it is a reflector. The sun is a key light or backlight. The general nature of the light is a hot sun. An octabox when the sun is a field light. Cloudy, the character of the natural light is soft or the model and the most of the skin in the shadow. My task is to achieve harmony. 
So, the first case, the sun as a key light or backlight. Often I use 8200 Pro with reflector. Another option, just flash without a light modifier, but you need a lot of power. The second case, cloudy. The character of natural light is soft, our model and the most of the skin is in the shadow. The sun is a field light. I use the octobox, in this case 88 centimeters. It is worth adding that sometimes a large octobox with a diffuser a large distance from the flash to the model for a full body frame require more power. This is a great universal tool for many tasks. Thank you for watching, I wish you a great inspiration. Edition Etching Rag is really a beautiful paper with a distinct texture and grain to the paper surface, but at the same time it holds image detail really well. And that's when I choose Edition Etching, when, when I sort of want a little bit of both, some grain and some texture. It's not as smooth as printmaking rag or Velen Museum rag, for example. Certainly not as smooth as rag photographique, but it also holds image detail really well, has great black density, great contrast. Um, it's a 100% cotton rag paper, no OBAs, of course, um, and it just feels really nice to hold and touch in your hand. And again, the, the smoothness and the grain of the paper is really nice. And I think it just works well in a wide variety of images, a very versatile paper, um, landscapes, nature, portraits, black and white, abstracts, reproductions even. Um, I particularly like it on some of my landscape images where, for example, I might have an area of the image that's really smooth and I want the grain to add a certain dimension to that part of the image. But at the same time, I have a lot of detail and I want the paper to hold that image detail and sharpness really well.
thing I didn't realise getting into this career was how much time you'd have to spend at your desk. Emails, client bookings, following up on leads, sending out quotes. This stuff takes time. And I remember the time when everything changed. Hey, Ben. No, 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 no worries. I'll, yeah, I'll be there real soon. See you in a sec. Yeah, that was me when I first started. Hey, Sarah, thanks for calling me back. Okay, I'll see you in an hour. Converting inquiries into bookings, sending quotes and contracts, keeping track of all my shoots, it's now all taken care of with Studio Ninja. Beautiful, big smile. With Studio Ninja, I never have to worry about following up on leads, chasing payments or missing shoots. Fine, beautiful. As I said, I'm a photographer, not an administrator. So if you want to spend more time doing what you love, let Studio Ninja help. Hey everybody, my name is Ted Felsberg. I'm a wedding photographer in New Jersey. I just want to take you a quick second and tell you about Imagine AI. It's this really cool artificial intelligence editing software that to me, when I heard about it, was instantly something I wanted to jump on. When I got my first edits back, I almost cried when the edits were populating into Lightroom and I was seeing exactly how close it was to how I edit everything. To just imagine how much time I'm gonna save and how much of my life I'm gonna get back from editing in my business, it's life changing. I hope everyone who does photography tries this out. It's absolutely incredible and it's gonna really transform your business so you get your life back. I couldn't be more excited to share this with everybody I know and I hope everybody will give it a try. As a female athlete, I feel such a balance between being fierce and feminine. And it's such a powerful feeling.
The initial feeling that I get when I touch the ocean and, and the water and, you know, I feel it on my skin. How do I describe it? It's just the most beautiful feeling in the world. My training needs to change. I need to be put in situations where, where I'm feeling uncomfortable and, and that's where you really learn to grow. You push yourself into these zones that are something different. Home to me feels like comfort and happiness, sunshine, all of the things that make me smile. In these creative outlets, like surfing and photography and music, there's no right or wrong. It's just everybody's individual. Everybody has a unique style and you know when you've captured a moment because it feels right for you. As human beings, photographs and stories, memories, that's all we really have. So it's awesome to be able to capture them in, in the most quality way. We're Tim and Nadine. We are wedding photographers based in Wellington, New Zealand. Using Studio Ninja has allowed us to reduce the amount of time that we spend doing the stuff that we hate the most in this business, which really is the paperwork. Studio Ninja gives us back time. Instead of spending time filling in spreadsheets, we can be off uh, taking pictures, creating art, I don't know, relaxing, making puzzles. Making puzzles. <laughs>
Hola amigos, I'm Andre Rosalev, worldwide art and fashion photographer. This time I visited Spain. My schedule consisted of various tasks in Valencia and Barcelona, including my workshop and editorial for a magazine. Everywhere I need to be able to achieve an artistic result. I like it than flash using to achieve an overall harmony with natural light. My favorite actor boxes created delicate illumination. In this case, it is 88 centimeters. In my workshop in Valencia, I demonstrated the possibility of artistic photography after sunset. It was almost dark, so I will tell you more about the lighting scheme. On the left is an 8200 Pro Flash with a warm conversion filter. On the right is another 8200 Pro Flash with a cold conversion filter. I use it to change the color temperature a bit, not a blue tint, this is not a blue gel filter. Both flashes with a Fresnel head and diffusers, those we achieve the color volume. In Barcelona a more difficult task awaited me. 28 dresses, a quick change of locations, unpredictable weather and unplanned situations, wake up at 6 in the morning. I always have to be ready to shoot in any conditions. This is a conditional simple classification depending on the character of natural light. For this task I had two main tools if we're talking about light modifiers. First, it is a reflector. The sun is a key light or backlight. The general nature of the light is a hot sun. An octabox when the sun is a field light. Cloudy, the character of the natural light is soft or the model and the most of the skin in the shadow. My task is to achieve harmony. 
So, the first case, the sun as a key light or backlight. Often I use 8200 Pro with reflector. Another option, just flash without a light modifier, but you need a lot of power. The second case, cloudy. The character of natural light is soft, our model and the most of the skin is in the shadow. The sun is a field light. I use the octobox, in this case 88 centimeters. It is worth adding that sometimes a large octobox with a diffuser a large distance from the flash to the model for a full body frame require more power. This is a great universal tool for many tasks. Thank you for watching, I wish you a great inspiration. Edition Etching Rag is really a beautiful paper with a distinct texture and grain to the paper surface, but at the same time it holds image detail really well. And that's when I choose Edition Etching, when, when I sort of want a little bit of both, some grain and some texture. It's not as smooth as printmaking rag or Velen Museum rag, for example. Certainly not as smooth as rag photographique, but it also holds image detail really well, has great black density, great contrast. Um, it's a 100% cotton rag paper, no OBAs, of course, um, and it just feels really nice to hold and touch in your hand. And again, the, the smoothness and the grain of the paper is really nice. And I think it just works well in a wide variety of images, a very versatile paper, um, landscapes, nature, portraits, black and white, abstracts, reproductions even. Um, I particularly like it on some of my landscape images where, for example, I might have an area of the image that's really smooth and I want the grain to add a certain dimension to that part of the image. But at the same time, I have a lot of detail and I want the paper to hold that image detail and sharpness really well.
I didn't realise getting into this career was how much time you'd have to spend at your desk. Emails, client bookings, following up on leads, sending out quotes. This stuff takes time. And I remember the time when everything changed. Hey, Ben. No, 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 no worries. I'll, yeah, I'll be there real soon. See you in a sec. Yeah, that was me when I first started. Hey, Sarah, thanks for calling me back. Okay, I'll see you in an hour. Converting inquiries into bookings, sending quotes and contracts, keeping track of all my shoots, it's now all taken care of with Studio Ninja. Beautiful, big smile. With Studio Ninja, I never have to worry about following up on leads, chasing payments, or missing shoots. Fine, beautiful. As I said, I'm a photographer, not an administrator. So if you want to spend more time doing what you love, let Studio Ninja help. Hey everybody, my name is Ted Felsberg. I'm a wedding photographer in New Jersey. I just want to take you a quick second and tell you about Imagine AI. It's this really cool artificial intelligence editing software that to me, when I heard about it, was instantly something I wanted to jump on. When I got my first edits back, I almost cried when the edits were populating into Lightroom and I was seeing exactly how close it was to how I edit everything. To just imagine how much time I'm gonna save and how much of my life I'm gonna get back from editing in my business, it's life changing. I hope everyone who does photography tries this out. It's absolutely incredible and it's gonna really transform your business so you get your life back. I couldn't be more excited to share this with everybody I know and I hope everybody will give it a try. Welcome back to the Australian Photographic Prize. We're here in the afternoon and we're about to look at some of the school entries, the, the, starting with the primary school entries and followed by the secondary school entries. And this afternoon we are actually going to present the winners. We've got a few of the students from, is it Hillcrest you guys are from? Welcome to the room. Well, uh, hopefully you can pick up a few tips and perhaps later on share some back with the, with the uh, judges. They may be able to learn a thing or two. And you guys are from the media class, is that right? And I'm joined by Stuart Alsop, who's from Crest Colleges. Uh, Stuart, tell us a little bit about Crest. I mean, Crest and Godox are our sponsors for these school categories. Yep. Tell us a bit about that. Well, Crest edu Education covers both Hillcrest uh, and Rivercrest Christian Colleges. So um, they're both on the same campus. There's about 140 acres there. Hillcrest is at the front and Rivercrest is the back. And we've got 25 acres of wetlands as well as a, an equestrian centre. So. Um, lots of opportunities for our students and especially today all the students here that are present actually entered these awards so oh, there'll cool. be 
super keen to f get some feedback and from the professionals here and yeah, hopefully it might end up into a career in the future. And if kids or students at the, the colleges are interested in photography, what are the sort of streams they can follow? Um, we have our visual arts department, so we have um, photographic studios upstairs as well as the um, video studios to the side as well. So we've got labs set up, um, VCD, visual communication, uh, photography, ceramics, um, yeah, so any stream that they want to pursue. So great opportunities to explore the creative output and find a career in creativity. Yeah, for sure. Like the rest of us have. Yes. Uh, Godox, as I said, are the, also the other sponsor and the, the winning students receive a complete or a full vlogging kit. Uh, for those of you over the age of 16 or 18 who don't know what a vlogging kit is, I'm sure these guys over here will be happy to tell you what a vlogging kit does. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a great prize and uh, something well worth looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by looking at the entries in a slideshow and we'll follow that up with the top 10, the finalists. We'll explore the, um, get some feedback on the top 10. We'll start with the number, like in the top 10, there's a, the seven that didn't make the final three and then we'll look at the final three and see who our winner is. So uh, we have um, Mel, we have Emily, Amanda or Boots, we have Robin and we have Kay. We do have male judges and jurors, but they're having a break at the moment. <laughs> and um, I've done a bit of photography myself. I should have introduced myself. I'm Tony Hewitt and I'm also a photographer of sorts. So let's have a listen. Let's have a start by looking at the slideshow and then we'll have a bit of a chat about the top ten. Can we just, yeah, well done. Can, can we just double check that actually was the students and not one of the... <laughs> Pretty good. I don't know about you guys, but... I, <laughs> I, I, that was quite an impressive set of pictures, wasn't it, really? So congratulations to all those who entered. Just by entering, I think you're a winner in any competition. Uh, it forces you to sort of have a think about the, what you can produce and pushes you to your best. But let's have a look at the top ten. We're going to look at the, the seven that didn't make the final three first in no particular order. And each of our jurors, or I'll ask two or three of our jurors to have a comment about the positives and why they feel that this image made the top ten. Now, some of our jurors did some of the judging and some didn't, so some may have seen the image before. For others, it'll be the first time. So let's have a look at the first of these finalists. All right, and I'm going to start with Emily. I knew you were going to go of me first. I was. Yeah, I love the uh, the tonality of this image. It's just got a beautiful. It, it makes you want to immerse yourself into uh, the scene. I think it's uh, well captured, and I see what the photographer has tried to encapsulate uh, in mood and um, feeling here. Okay, thanks, Emily. Robin. Uh, it's quite joyful, really, with the um, the diagonal horizon. You know, you get a sense of running down into the beach and enjoying your moment and just wanting to immerse yourself. Cool. Okay. I knew you were going to do that. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I really love the diagonal side of it. It adds a real dynamic to the to the image, and just the colour tones that are coming throughout are really, really um, joyous. Yeah, there's a lot of emotion coming out of that picture, isn't it? Well done. Top ten. Next one, please. Mel? Thanks. Uh, this is a, a beautiful uh, landscape with an excellent uh, rule of thirds composition uh, and those lovely clouds mimicking the peaks as, as they drift ac across the, the mountain peaks there. Beautiful colour. Amanda? Yeah, really good choice of time of day for this um, student, which is very well done because beautiful pink and, and the blue water contrasting so nicely. 
I'm glad you reminded us that we're looking at student work because I have to say, honestly, this is some yeah. great work, guys. So. Yeah. Uh, Robin, anything to add? Yeah, I like the, the addition of the little points of interest in the foreground as well, just nicely framing the picture. Like a nice little bookend. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Well done. Top ten. Next one, please. Kay, I'll start with you. Really enjoying the colour, tone, the co contrast and colour of the warmth and the coolness there, and you really get a sense of our, the mood that's actually happening, which I'm sure the photographer was probably freezing when they took this photograph. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and and that golden glow, um, being it's competing there with the weather that's closing in, so it's uh, it's an excellent time timely capture. Amanda, yeah, it's such a, a grand image, like a, a huge scale, but I th I think there's a bird there in the yeah. in the top, which just gives us uh, that real sense of scale. So well done. Yeah, awesome work again. Nice top ten, yeah. great effort. Next image, please. Robin, start with you. Yeah, this is a fun image, isn't it? And um, I like the portrait aspect of it as well. So that just leads, the foreground detail leads me directly into the picture and onto the subject. So um, the photographer has technically captured that really well. Emily? It's like a little environmental portrait, an urban landscape for this little creature. Uh, it's been so well seen to actually get down low and use the low angle to lead us into it. And that nice little... Um, hills hoist in the back there it just it's that little extra something that just keeps us there so well done okay anything to add uh no i think the composition emphasizing that reflection that leads your eye right up into a beautiful um blue sky is is amazing thank you yeah great use of a lot of color but all at the same time balanced well done next image please amanda um beautiful colors to capture this so we um straight away know, away know what season we're in so Really great storytelling, and I just love all those windy, gnarled branches. A lot of great texture, so well done. Robin? Yeah, nice composition with putting the trunk right in the centre there as well, and then providing some mid-ground action as well with the green uh, foliage behind there. I think that's well seen. Mel? Yeah, we couldn't quite often just focus on those autumnal colours, but this photographer's found a perspective to actually show off those intertwining trunks, and I, I think they've done well. Yeah, is it a great uh, opportunity or a great uh, example of taking chaos and putting order to it in a way that gives us symmetry and balance? Um, we might switch the judge out, and, or switch two out actually, uh, Amanda and Robin, and we'll bring in Paul and Tim. Thank you. Oh, and, and Kay, oh no, actually you stay there, Mel, and we'll bring Harriet in. So we'll keep them fresh and get some fresh opinions. Thanks, Harriet. Can I add a comment on this one? Sure, go for it. I really, I actually see a little figure in the in the tree tree trunks. A little, it's almost like an animal, or a monkey, um, on the top, sort of the top leaf, which I, I find really Hanging appealing. Out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's called pareidolia. The ability when we look at things that are, mean nothing and yet we make sense out of it. Looking at clouds and seeing rabbits. Well done. Next image, please. And we're joined by Paul, Harriet, and Tim, and. Tim, we'll start with you. Thanks Look like they're your boots. Yeah, I think the way the image is ordered, just using the curve at the bottom to set the boots on and then the diagonal uh, uh, with the hat and the, the, uh, the whip over it, um, great tonal contrast there. You've got lots of darks, lots of lights, and you know, it's structured really well. Harriet? Yeah, it gives a really good sense of um, kind of the environment and the place, just with the hat and boots, you can kind of tell it's a... Uh, the, where the people are from, you know, it's kind of country, country vibes and, um, yeah, beautifully kind of cropped and um, well um, exposed and what have you as well. So really great work for um, a young photographer. Paul, you've probably hung out in places like this. Oh, I, what I love about this image in particular is this absolutely delicious textural qualities all the way through that, that are brought out really beautifully with the, with the choice of, of lighting and, and just how richly they fill the frame. Yeah. No, well said. Congratulations again on a top 10 place. We'll have the next image, please. I'll start with you, Kay. Really nice contrast between the foreground and background, creating that lovely separation, which is enhanced by the, the just the peaking of the, the lake in between um, that foreground and background. Really nice use. Reminds me of where you come from, New Zealand. It does remind me of where I come from. Emily. I think we discussed this is like a lasagna. It's got layer after layer after layer. And it just leads us beautifully through the image, through those shapes that the photographer has seen and uh, holds us in there with the, the, the darkness at the top of the clouds, holds us right in that, in that frame. Tim? Yeah, I think that, uh, that 
technique visually of uh, containing the image with the dark clouds at the top works really well. Yeah, yeah well controlled image. Congratulations. Next image, please. So that's our, that's seven of the top ten finalists. There's three finalists to go, and these are going to be in the order of the two runner-ups in the no particular order, equal runner-up. So there's two equal or equal second, if you like, and then we'll uh, share the, f the first place getter. So the first of our two runner-ups in no particular order is... Awesome. OK, Paul, this looks like something you'd get your teeth into. <laughs> Oh, I actually want to dive in there, first thing. Um, it has a quite a mystical sort of quality to it, both. It feels a bit ethereal, it, it feels a bit otherworldly, it feels a bit dreamlike, and that's accentuated by, by the colour, and, and there's a curious kind of mixture of circular and, and linear kind of elements that, that really tie together in a really intriguing way. Yeah. Emily? What Paul said. <laughs> <laughs> I think... The photographer here has seen something that wasn't there on face value. They've gone a bit deeper, they've seen something special in it and they've, the, the beautiful contrast of the blue and the, the colour, it could be two different images. It could be a cyanotype and a, a, a Polaroid, you know, it's just magic. Harriet? Yeah, it's really interesting. They're really pushing their creativity, which is really lovely to see. I kind of don't know whether it's sort of the edge of the, the ground and the sea or if it's a hill um, and the sky and there's this beautiful kind of bouquet of flowers or is it coral? Yeah, it's really lovely. It's kind of really representative of a lot of um, environment and nature and I think the photographer's really thinking about those things. It's lovely. Mm, and there's an interesting, you know, offset to the cop and the composition is very different. The geometry of that straight line, you know, bi bisecting on a diagonal but cutting the image in half. And then you've got this soft, off-centred, you know, floral, yeah. organic, feminine shape. So, yeah. congratulations, a, a runner-up, equal second for that image. And we can almost see who that is, actually. Dal Ben, is it? Um, or Evan? <laughs> I can't... Evan? Is it? Yeah, yeah it's Evan in the room. Yeah. So you're smart. <laughs> I tell you what, you could pretty much start throwing it into open and you'd do well too. So it's pretty hard to impress this lot. They're a hard bunch. So well done. Okay, let's have a look at the other equal runner-up. Okay, Tim. I like the mystery of this, isn't it? It's what's not shown in the image, which uh, sort of in, uh, gives a little bit of ad added interest to the image, but just the way it's framed. Um, the choice of putting it in the middle is a brave one, but it's worked well. And just the texture that the tree provides against that really neutral background, um, great centre of interest. Paul. I, I just love the beautiful, soft, um, open sort of atmosphere about it. It's something really uplifting about a very cool sort of scene. So somehow it's very sensual, it's very engaging, it's it's quite refreshing, and it has a lot of breathing room and space in the way it's designed. Uh, well done. Kay, this is sort of your style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the lone tree. <laughs> um, I, I'm really enjoying the sense of place I'm getting from, from looking at this image. You really get, you know, the, the, the the bar barrenness of the leaves on the trees, just the twigs and everything showing, really gives you that sense of, of fragility in a harsh environment which is really up high and it's been beautifully seen and captured. Yeah, well done. Is, is Polly in the room? I think it says Polly, is that right? Correct me if I get these spellings wrong. Okay, well, if they're not, they might be watching online. If you are, congratulations, well done. This round of applause is for you. <laughs> and that brings us to what's coming up will be the winner of the primary students uh, category in the student awards and that's our winner. And again, Polly, well done, not bad. First place and one of the runner-ups. So let's have a comment from Harriet. Yeah, I actually saw this one in the slideshow and thought, ooh, that's my pick. So <laughs> congratulations, Polly. It's really beautiful. It's really subtle and uh, delicate to capture those clouds that are just encompassing um, in that graphic nature around those two little birds that you just feel are off on their big adventure. Um, yeah, really lovely, great storytelling, really graphic, and yeah, well, well shot. Congratulations, Polly. Tim? Yeah, some interesting choices there, aren't they? One bird, two bird, you know, what, what you do. You've got the very heavy uh, cloud to uh, the sort of top right, so you need the thing down in the bottom to balance that visually. And uh, the selection of two, I think, adds to the story. 
Emily? This blew my mind that a primary school student had taken this shot because it was reminiscent of grown-ups. <laughs> um, but I think that's the beauty of it because a younger person has seen something and they've just instinctively captured it because this was a split moment that's been captured here. And um, absolutely congratulations to the photographer. Yeah, uh, it is the winner, so we're going to get everyone to comment, Kay? Oh, oh. Yeah, I really like the composition has been really well handled. Just that the dark and the light and the placement of those birds in the scene has just been really well handled. I just think this is a piece of visual poetry. <laughs> it, it just transcends the moment and, and it takes you somewhere that you don't even need to or have to put into words. Mm. And that's quite rare to capture, particularly in a, in a single moment. Absolutely stunning. Well done. Yeah, and I think, you know, just to compliment what you've all said is, you know, there's a strength in simplicity and mm. just goes to show, you know, you guys at the back there, it doesn't have to be complicated and clever. That's clever in a, very, in a very simple way and sometimes that's a stronger way to do it. So congratulations, Polly. Absolutely awesome effort. Um, congratulations to all those top ten and to all the students who entered in the primary category. They're all wonderful images to see. I think uh, suitably, I know at the bar tonight, which primary students can't attend, of course, <laughs> or secondary by that way. Um, but I'm sure they'll come up in conversation a few times and there'll be a few ideas get tucked away in the brain. Uh, we will present the winner, uh, or uh, Stuart will come up at the end of this process with the secondary students will do both the winners so we're now going to move into the secondary students category and again well done to young ben there for ben was it i did get evan my apologies evan um <clears throat> for uh you know doing so well that's awesome mate love your jacket too <laughs> we're gonna have a look at a slideshow of the secondary secondary school entries and then we'll do the same process for the top 10 so let's have a look at the secondary school entries in the australian photographic prize for the student photography awards Okay, wonderful set of pictures there. Congratulations to everybody who entered uh, into that category. And I'm guessing that some of you guys up the back there uh, were in that, were you? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> well, good luck. Let's see, uh, let's see who made that, that top ten. So, again, we look at the first seven of the top ten finalists and then we'll look at the two runner-ups and then we'll see who the winner was. So let's have a look at our first finalist. Awesome. Okay, let's start with Harriet. Oh, it's so interesting seeing, um, you know, this from a perspective of a um, high school student because for me this is sort of like the the, the sands of time. <laughs> um, but it's great. It's really interesting. Um, the I love the kind of broken glass segment um, shears that are sort of on the table there. Um, the lighting with that shadow on the back wall is really beautiful. Um, yeah, really, really lovely. I'd like uh, maybe even like to see it sort of a little bit of a wider crop to see a little bit more of the environment around it. But yeah, really interesting. It's got me thinking. Thanks, Harriet. So a couple of things that could even take it further, but as, as, as good as it is. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay? Just turn the mic on. Um, gosh, you said it all, Harriet. <laughs> um, really, I think the concept, I think I'd love to, 
to um, talk to the photographer to underst understand a little bit what that concept is because it's been really beautifully ha handled. The highlights are really well um, controlled. The the tonal range and the image is really really well handled. Um, interesting interesting piece. Uh, Emily. Again, I, I, I can sense the angst and the, the tension in this image and I think the, um, the bright contrast, like the contrast between the blacks and the whites and the, the, the jagged uh, edges of the, the glass that's broken, I think it's telling us a great story here. And I think, yeah, I would love to know what the photographer was thinking in, in wh where they were going with it, but I think as viewers we all read our own, you know, sense of time in this, like... Is it escaping us? Is, have we broken time? Is, <laughs> does time stand still now? Mm. Well, if Isaac's in the room, is he? No? Oh, well, you I'm can't. Is he? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, let's have a comment from Paul. What I feel about this image is, is if I was going to title this image, I would, I, would, I would use the word echo. And because there's this repetition and this depth created by the shadow, like the echo of time, there's something reverberating around the room and the space, both visually and thematically, which I find really intriguing. And then you come back to that mystery of, of what they're trying to communicate through the broken thing in particular. It just could take us a lot of places, lots of layers, lots of depth. Beautiful. Thanks, Paul. Well done. Uh, we might just get a few judges changed. So, Kay, you have a little break and bring Amanda back. And uh, you just stepped off, didn't you? Who else have we got? Yeah, Robin. Um, who's been on the whole time? Uh, thanks, Emily. And I might bring you back in a minute. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. And we'll start with Robin. I knew you'd drop me in. <laughs> okay, uh, lovely directional lines in this. Um, I love the placement of the subject straight in the front, in the foreground there. And, uh, and the use of the tram tracks just leads you straight back into the distance with the light in the background taking your eye that direction as well. Paul? Yeah, what she said. I, I, I think what's intriguing about this image from a, an emotional impact is the, the colour tone mm. uh, that's been used. It, it's almost like banal. And it, and it creates this, almost like this weight, uh, and which which makes me sort of want to ponder about, well, what are they communicating here about this environment? You know, is it heavy? Is it sluggish? Is it slow? Is it is it devoid of life? Um, and that's what's got me thinking. Yeah, no, well pointed out. Harriet, anything to add? Um, yeah, I, I agree with um, both the comments here. I think that lovely afternoon light that's coming in in the background, it gives you that sense of time of day. It's right, like it's sort of like the calm before the rush hour storm almost and the foreboding of uh, yeah, the, the onslaught of um, yeah, rush hour. <laughs> this is what I'm getting from it. And again, a worthy finalist. So well done to Jacob. Next image, thanks. Amanda. Yeah, I like the movement that's coming through this image, like um, the water running down. I'm not sure, like, are we looking into a grater? So, um, like a cheese grater, I think, from the end. So, um, really good perspective. You've brought us into your world and shown us um, something maybe none of us have ever looked at before. Mm. Um, so, interesting image and um, you've added to the perspective with that, with that flowing water. Well done. Tim? Yeah, just the, um, the depth of field captured there just gives us that added sense of um, three-dimensional space. So we get a real sense of having to move right into the image to the, uh, to the sharp water at the back. Harriet, um, comment maybe on the colours? Uh, yeah, I mean, th those look like lovely greens that are popping in the background are really beautiful and it kind of makes a, this cocoon of the greater like even more kind of um, intimate but uh, what i really love about this is it's a real child's perspective mm. and it's not something that we would kind of as adults you know we're, we're not used to kind of looking in strange places anymore <laughs> we sort of but as kids you can really imagine that like a child sort of going oh that's a really good you know good angle from from down here that they might have seen so i i really like having that insight into a different age group's perspective yeah, I think the prime, the, the, the richness of the colours and the, 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 there's a freshness about this image which is complementary to the utensil and what it's used for and the fact that the water's clear, it's all about, you know, I get this sense of freshness yes, and absolutely. health. absolutely. Well done. Congratulations to Stephen. Stephen in the room? Yeah, well, well done, mate. Well done, Stephen. <laughs> Another finalist. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. And let's start off with Harriet. 
Oh yes, this is. Um, I noticed this in the slideshow as well. That's uh, this is a photographer that I think is definitely trying to convey a message and a feeling, which is really, um, I think, really wonderful for you know a young photographer to be kind of really trying to um, put some th some depth out there within their photography. So um, yeah, I love that. I love that, that there's a there's a underlying meaning there. Tim. Yeah, talk to the hand. So, uh, <laughs> I like the overlay of the two images, just where you've got the, uh, you know, the, the, the backdrop gives the uh, sort of the everyday environment, dressed in the school uniform, but uh, uh, they're trying to be something else, so. Amanda? Yeah, this is a interesting portrait, something, um, you know, not out of, the, out of the norm, you'd say. So I like the leading lines bringing us straight into the character. Um, from the side, and then we have um, the up and down lines right where where that hand is, leaving us there with the black at the bottom and the light at the top. So, really great composition. Yeah, I think they've done a lot of broken a lot of rules in terms of off color. The color palette's kind of weird. There's a mm. distortion and there's mm. layers, but it, and it kind of sums up a little bit maybe that confusion time of you know late teens and early adulthood and and the hand and the, the resistance. There's a whole bunch of narrative going on there and it's really well put together. Yeah. So congratulations. Is uh, Aaron in the room? Yeah, well done, mate. Oh, well done. Nice shot. <laughs> Next image, thanks. Okay, Robin. Ah, oh, this is lovely, really. Um, it's beautifully done. I, and instantly what strikes me is because I couldn't recognise it, I had to switch it up upside down straight away to see what was actually going on. So there's a fabulous sense of creativity. And with the palette as well, the really warm palette, you know, moving into the, the from the warms into the darks, the light, the cools, the warms into the cools, um, it, there's a sense of fun there. Well done. Paul. This image just feels beautifully designed. Uh, if you squint your eyes and just soften them, you can just enjoy the shapes alone and, and the graphical content there. And yet we're moved around very gently but deliberately by the warm and cool tonality and the various lines running through the frame. And it, it's a very rich, full piece. Well done. Amanda? Yeah, there's, ob there's obviously been a, a deliberate decision made to um, to give us a different perspective than than um, than what was in front of the photographer, like they've made an interesting choice there. So really um, congratulate them on being brave with their decision. Yeah, we'll pass that on. And I, I, for me, I get a, a little bit of a, a, a statement about the, from, a, from a young age looking out at art and trying to understand art and you guys in media, you know, for a lot of us, it seems like such an upside down world. Like it's hard to understand it because things aren't as they seem. And, Sometimes you've got to flip it on its head before it starts to be called art and so on. So I see this as a part of that journey and it's a strong statement and beautifully put together. It almost is a cross between painting and art. Mm. It looks like a painting in a lot of ways. So well seen. Well done to Isaac. Next image, please. Uh, Tim. Yeah, the repetition of the, uh, of the delivery system across the, uh, the flat plane. It's, um, you know, it's really well... Uh, put together and structured, just that sense of um, distance that you get as they uh, they recede into the uh, into that far right hand corner, and having the biggest one in the dark part of the the uh, image and the bright to draw your eye to the opposite direction, that sort of uh, structures the image well to be able to uh, to read it like that. Thanks, Tim. Harriet. Yeah, it's a beautiful um, landscape photo. I, I, yeah, I love the way that it kind of like that y your eye follows the power lines through the image. Um, and then there's sort of like uh, some of the power lines are sort of more separated on that left hand side and then it sort of clusters together on the right a little bit more. Um, yeah, really beautiful that uh, the beautiful tonality of that ground in the foreground as well, but then that sort of really urban kind of industrial kind of mm. power lines is, is, is a great juxtaposition. Paul. Uh, I enjoy all those aspects, but what I find most interesting to me personally is just this, the, the conversation about how unnatural mm. man's place in the world really <coughs> is. We've just built these crazy towers to transport energy from somewhere in the middle of nowhere to some in the middle of nowhere somewhere else. And, and it's a hugely colossal exercise and, and I don't know what. And so it really gets me thinking a lot about how we live uh, on, the, on the landscape that we do and the impacts that we have and how natural is it? 
and, ver and very strong composition and, and really well technically handled. Um, so congratulations to, I think, is it Tara? I can't quite read the font. Is it Tara? Anybody know? No? I apologise if I got that wrong, but another finalist, well done. Next image, please. Okay. Tim, you've probably been in a hot air balloon. <laughs> I like being higher than the hot air balloon. Look at that, that's great. Just to uh, turn that upside down, but just the also how it's managed visually. So you've got the, uh, the cool colours on the outside bringing you to the warmth in the middle. And uh, I think that works really well, just uh, being able to separate the subject sitting there nicely against the, uh, the darker unlit clouds and then having the sun on the clouds leading you through to the, uh, the light on the clouds in the distance. Well done. Amanda? Yeah, great perspective. Um, and also really enjoyable colour um, happening here. We've got the nice warm balloon that we're drawn into and that beautiful crisp blue sky. So we really get a feeling like we might be there. Mm. Harriet? Yeah, I love the way that balloon is sitting on that darker background, just pops out. You know, if it had been a little bit higher and mixed in with that um, bright horizon, it would have not worked as well. So the photographer has been very clever in that um, composition there. Again, a great example of the strength of simplicity and you know, simple geometry uh, can make for a strong image. So well done to Cameron. Is Cameron in the room? No. Nope. OK, let's have a look at the next one, please. OK, Paul, aerial photograph, something you've possibly done one or two of. Oh, yeah, I felt myself just clap my hands together and rub them when I saw this. <laughs> it's just, like, delicious. And the, the choice of framing really accentuates the, the subject matter beautifully. Um, you know, it's, it's a very... Um, it's quite a striking colour palette in that it's understated yet strong at the same time. And that mixture of the graphical and man-made and organic is, is quite a conversation that's held here. And it's done in quite a, a, a graphic sort of way, and yet there's still that conversation about the natural world that's placed around on the top in particular that's leading out. Um, absolutely exquisite. Nice time of day and lighting to shoot it in as well. Yeah. Harriet? Yeah, I mean, it's so um, perfect. <laughs> um, that tea, or the, the man-made tea amongst the landscape. And, uh, and again, the colour palette's beautiful. I think it's so easy to crank up saturation and think that you need that water really, really blue and really vibrant, but it actually makes it so much more just keeping it natural and keeping it understated. And it's, yeah, it, that's a, yeah, a beautiful aerial shot. Uh, Chris? Is Christian in the room? No, he's not. But I'm his mum. Oh, you're his mum. <laughs> well done, mum. <coughs> well, please if let him know. If you're justified in uh, uh, buying one of these drones, because so <laughs> they're not cheap. They're certainly impressed. Oh, so. Yeah, he loves the drone. Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah. yeah, good. Well, pass on our congratulations to be a finalist. Well done. Next image, please. Okay, so we've now got to the the two runner-ups, the equal runner-ups, and the winner. Um, congratulations to everybody who made the finals. It's not easy. And uh, let's see who our first of our runner-ups is. Ah, uh -huh. OK. Tim, that looks not markably like your mood sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's a great... I think that where it takes us with the humour is, uh, is somewhere great. So it's just it's taken some elements that we're all very familiar with. Uh, the depth of field is great just to, uh, to soften out that background, isolate the subject in the foreground, and just losing all the detail in the parking sign. So it's just, uh, just straight white. Just uh, breaks the whole image up and uh, sets up the scene for the quirky little bird. Robin? Look at him. It's P for parrot. Really. <laughs> and he's at a 90 degree, he's doing his best to be at the 90 degree angle. So I love, that, that makes a really strong story for me. You know, it's a moment just really well seen with him sitting on the, his little P for parrot sign. Yeah. Amanda? Yeah, he's, um, he's parked there. Um, <laughs> or he's perched there. Perched. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm there's, the, <laughs> yeah, there's just so much to like about this image. It, it looks very cheeky. But yeah, I love that um, 90 degree angle. He's doing everything perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Paul? Well, why not? We have to go with Paul, don't we? Paul. P. Uh, yeah, P for Paul. Um, what I enjoy about this is I'm reading into this conversation about, about how an animal would read how we do the world. Like, why do you have to be in this spot at this angle? I can fly where the heck I want. Like, yeah. What are you guys doing just 
just deliberating your life down to these microcosmic sort of angles and when there's so much freedom out here to join and explore and it's that conversation about man and nature and, and the organic and, and the controls, uh, which, which I read into here. So well done to Charlotte. Um, is Charlotte here? Is that yours, is it? Well done. Is that your parrot? No, I just saw it. <laughs> well, let me tell you something that the hardest thing in all photography is to have the ability to see. And I can tell you now, to all the panel would agree, mm. that shows somebody with great vision. So well done. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have another runner-up, equal runner-up. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go, something completely different. Um, Paul, what do, you, what do you think? I'm trying to see into it, but maybe I'll let myself go at not being able to. <laughs> um, it feels like a very sophisticated, deep, um, colour palette and conversation that's that's asking me to quiet down and slow down and sink in and be present with and and that colour palette has such a exquisite emotional quality and the softness of the lighting on the face just really pulls you in and holds you like an anchor point in the middle of the frame. I, I'd love to hear more about it from what other people think. Harriet? Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. It's um, so tender and being... Um, yeah, being someone that has been in this stage of life as a young female, I think there's a relationship you have with your best friends as a young woman and young girl. And I think, yeah, that's I can really see that in this image, that real closeness that you, you know you have with your best friends when you're a teenager, and um, it, that really transcends throughout the image for me. And I think I think it's beautiful. Amanda. Yeah, I think um, yeah we're we're seeing a moment here between two obviously very close friends. But I quite enjoyed the hair. Like um, we have one straight hair and one wavy haired girl, and and I don't know maybe I still do it, but like hiding behind that hair, mm. like that you do as a teenager. And um, you know if you've ever had long hair, um, that whole like it really is part of every movement you make. And I really enjoy that about that image. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. emotively, you know, strong in terms of its intimacy and privacy and almost being just let in on a little bit, but we don't get to see the entire story, which the, is part of the process. The crop really adds to mm, that as well, yeah. the fact that it's really tight, mm. it's really yeah. intimate, and that the fact that you're sort of right in there mm. with them really adds mm. to that as well. Yeah. Tim, you had a comment? Yeah, just the cinematic quality of it. Yeah. All right, yeah. So, so it's, it, it could be the opening scene for a movie. Yeah. So uh, just that, go. it's got that great Would, feel to it. Maybe a budding director in the room, Stephen? Yeah. Is it, is it Stephen? Sienna. Sienna, my apologies. It'll happen when you get older, don't worry. <laughs> is Sienna in the room? No? Well, is she at your school? No. Okay, well, wherever Sienna, wherever Sienna is hiding, um, don't stay hiding too long because you've got a hell of a lot of talent. Keep sharing it with the world. So well done, Sienna. Sure. And now we have our winner coming up. So this is the winner of the secondary students in the Australian Photography Prize um, uh, student categories. Or, and it's the secondary student winner. So let's start off with a comment from, wow, I mean from oh. Harriet. <laughs> I actually, I kind of don't know what I'm looking at, but that's kind of wonderful as well. Oh, it's down a slide. A tunnel, yeah. Oh, how wonderful. Okay, that's amazing. Isn't that fabulous when you see an image and you just don't know what it is, but you're, you're drawn to it, the colours are there, the graphic nature's there, the kind of, the compositions there with the kind of swirling making you go down towards that little light, light opening. And then it takes you like 30 seconds or a minute to figure out what it is and then bang, you know, what a great moment. So yeah, just wonderful, congratulations. I think, yeah, it's a great photo. Tim? Yeah, really strong, simple geometry. And I think, which we were chatting about before, often the simpler the image, um, uh, the more impact it has, but overlaid on that simple geometry is lots of texture, lots of uh, depth with the reflections and the color choices in the middle there so um, you know an overarching simple geometry but really well layered up. Robin? Oh that colour palette is just luscious that those beautiful olive tones leading through and you know taking us right through into the light as well you know the fact that we have to think carefully about what we're actually seeing keeps us in the picture for so much longer and I applaud the photographer for that. Paul? There's a beautiful strength to the structural design in this. There's this wonderful circular flow around the middle and it's held by this strong graphical intense square crop that just pulls us through the frame through that pop of colour in the background. It's um, 
incredibly well seated design. I'd be super proud to have a shot like this. <laughs> Amanda? Yeah, I can almost see an eye like side on. So it's, and that's like we're getting this view, like a view that probably um, us on the panel haven't seen in quite a while. <laughs> um, down, a, down a slide, but yeah, congratulations. Beautiful image, very graphic, love it. Now, just listening to your comments, I mean, I, you can't help but look at that picture and actually feel like you're sitting on the slide and it's that same sense that you're being pulled down into the slide and you're not quite sure what you're looking at, as you said, Harriet, but, mm. but you know it's coming. Yeah. You can see a hint, hint of it. So congratulations to Cameron. Is Cameron in the room? Cameron's not in the room either. So congratulations to Cameron uh, as our winner of the Secondary Student Awards. An incredible set of pictures. <laughs> And uh, again, I, I can't um, iterate enough just how impressed it was for me, I'm sure for the rest of you, to see this standard of work coming from students both at primary and secondary level. So Absolutely congratulations seconds. to all the students for entering. Well done, guys. Well done yeah. to you guys. Um, I hope you've been able to take away something, but let's have a, a little presentation. We've got Stuart's going to come back from Crest, uh, although I do have the feeling that our two winners are not going to be in the room. So hopefully they're watching and they can see a bit of this, but I'll get Stuart to show them what... Come over here, Stuart, if you will. And I might pinch your mic, Amanda. So... So that's the second... That's the secondary... Award. So what we might do is Polly and Cameron. Uh, this is the secondary one. So this is Cameron's. That's yours there, mate. You can uh, maybe say a few things on behalf of Crest and on behalf of... Yeah, congratulations... Congratulations to all the entrants. Um, it's great to get feedback and uh, almost uh, welcome to the, the guys that got in the top 10 as well. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for entering and um, putting your work out there. I know it can be a bit of a, uh, um, a bit of a task to put it out there and you're not sure what the feedback's going to be like. But uh, yeah, thank you for the judges for um, your time and, and for judging as well. And this is the uh, first place for the primary award. So I'm not sure if you can see that. Yep. And, that's and congratulations. The and that's so congratulations the to both Polly and to Cameron. Mm. Cameron's well done. Christian. Cameron? Cameron. 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 <laughs> Cameron. <laughs> Name's going through my head. Well done, guys. And uh, perhaps since we do have the students here, if they've got, where are their teachers? Are there teachers in the room? Uh, yeah. Polly, up there. Have we got um, perhaps two minutes? Have they got two minutes? I'm just going to get a bit of advice for them while they're in the room about some things. So thanks, Stuart. Yep, thank you. Um, and we'll make sure, or you can make sure they get to the <laughs> right the people. Post, yes. Yep, beautiful. Thank you. Yep. And I'm going to ask you guys, maybe just quickly, very quickly, a little bit of advice for our budding uh, image makers up there of wh what's something you've learned over the journey that you think you would have liked to have learned when you were, how old are you guys? 17, 16, 14? <laughs> Somewhere around that bracket. Tim? Uh, explore. So just don't take things that uh, people uh, tell you or images that you've seen. Just take your own exploration. Just look and see what you see and try to capture it your way. Don't try to capture it someone else's way. Robin? A strong, simple subject. Just take out the distraction so we can focus on one thing that's in there and make that strong and beautiful and don't be frightened to crop right in nice and tight so we get a much more dynamic image. Paul? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I think the most important thing is to photograph what you love and what's important to you. And that can be your family, that can be your home, that can be the things that are around you. It can be what you think, you know, are big issues in life that are important to you. But if you have the passion behind what you're photographing, that's the most important thing. Everything else you can learn. But don't photograph things you think you should photograph. Photograph what's in your heart, what you feel you should be. Amanda, thanks, Harry. Yeah, I think um, to learn to look for the story when you're um, choosing what to photograph and think think carefully about what it what it is you're trying to say when you take the image, and and be brave. You know, sometimes um, we can be shy as photographers hiding behind the camera, but you know, be brave in your choices. Paul. I just encourage you to be present to the fact that you, you have a lot of power in your hands and your phone and your camera and the moment and how you see and you can engage and you can shift the way people see things, you can change the way people engage with the world, you can support certain issues and, and as Harriet said, the great strength will come through and, and where you will find the most energy and momentum and interest and, and you'll follow through the most will be in the areas that you're really, really drawn to 
If you sit really quietly and say, what makes my blood boil? What makes my heart sing? What gets me excited? Head down that path and go for it. And the world needs your voice now. So don't be shy with it. Not bad, is it? I'll just add to that from the movie. Um, I can't remember the name of the movie. It doesn't matter. But if you just think of, you see the world out there and they say, a picture paints a thousand world, a very old saying. But building on what Paul said, if your eyes had a voice, what would they want to say? And the picture is your way of saying it. So thanks to the panel, uh, great set of images. And for those students who are in the room, when you go back to school, if you've got other students that weren't here, please tell them just how impressed everybody was because you did great. And hopefully we'll see you again next year. So thanks again and well done to all the students. Thank you for the panel. So we're going to take a five minute break and we'll be back to look at the creative category from the Nikon Digital Awards. And if the students are still there, if these guys make themselves available, if you've got a question, although the teachers might want to get them out of here. Is that right? <laughs> you have to head back. All right, maybe another time. Thanks, guys. Take care. We'll see you soon. As a female athlete, I feel such a balance between being fierce and feminine. And it's such a powerful feeling. The initial feeling that I get when I touch the ocean and, and the water and, you know, I feel it on my skin. How do I describe it? It's just the most beautiful feeling in the world. My training needs to change. I need to be put in situations where, where I'm feeling uncomfortable and, and that's where you really learn to grow. You push yourself into these zones that are something different. Home to me feels like comfort and happiness, sunshine, all of the things that make me smile. In these creative outlets, like surfing and photography and music, there's no right or wrong. It's just everybody's individual. Everybody has a unique style and you know when you've captured a moment because it feels right for you. As human beings, photographs and stories, memories, that's all we really have. So it's awesome to be able to capture them in, in the most quality way. We're Tim and Nadine. We are wedding photographers based in Wellington, New Zealand. Using Studio Ninja has allowed us to reduce the amount of time that we spend doing the stuff that we hate the most in this business, which really is the paperwork. Studio Ninja gives us back time. Instead of spending time filling in spreadsheets, we can be off uh, taking pictures, creating art, I don't know, relaxing, making puzzles. Making puzzles. <laughs>As image makers, we need to look around. We need to see the world. We need to go to museums. We need to go to galleries so we can understand the use of color and light and shadow. In that respect, everything needs to be considered. If there's a rule for the images that we're trying to make, they shouldn't just appeal to architects. They should be images that when framed, your grandmother falls in love with it and wants to hang on her wall. So the purpose of our image making is not to recreate a photograph. We have the ability to play with light, to play with atmosphere that potentially makes that image more visually engaging. This is our perception of reality.
there's an understanding of the colour within a composition. So that colour palette is often driven by the colour in a brick or the timber or the floor. The image in its entirety needs to harmonise. As well as photography, there are painters that we look at. The way that they have painted with colour and tone and light, they're in museums. And it kind of occurred to me that we are recording the architecture of our time. We want to celebrate those images by framing them and putting them on a wall. So in years to come, could you have a museum where there are digital paintings that people want to come and visit? A song can be broken down into different elements. They all play a part in the composition of that soundtrack. There'll be something about that song that makes you want to play that song over and over again. And maybe each time you'll pick up on different elements. If we make a successful image, you'll want to look at it over and over again. Maybe the more that you look at it, you will then pick up the fact that there's leaves on the ground, or there's dapple shadow in the corner, or there's a figure in the window. So there's thought into every aspect.
Hola amigos, I'm Andre Rosalev, worldwide art and fashion photographer. This time I visited Spain. My schedule consisted of various tasks in Valencia and Barcelona, including my workshop and editorial for a magazine. Everywhere I need to be able to achieve an artistic result. I like it than flash using to achieve an overall harmony with natural light. My favorite actor boxes created delicate illumination. In this case, it is 88 centimeters. In my workshop in Valencia, I demonstrated the possibility of artistic photography after sunset. It was almost dark, so I will tell you more about the lighting scheme. On the left is an 8200 Pro Flash with a warm conversion filter. On the right is another 8200 Pro Flash with a cold conversion filter. I use it to change the color temperature a bit. Not a blue tint, this is not a blue gel filter. Both flashes with a Fresno head and diffusers. Those we achieve the color volume. In Barcelona a more difficult task awaited me. 28 dresses, a quick change of locations, unpredictable weather and unplanned situations. Wake up at 6 in the morning. I always have to be ready to shoot in any conditions. This is a conditional simple classification depending on the character of natural light. For this task I had two main tools if we are talking about light modifiers. First, it is a reflector. The sun is a key light or backlight. The general nature of the light is a hot sun. An octabox when the sun is a field light. Cloudy, the character of the natural light is soft or the model and the most of the skin in the shadow. My task is to achieve harmony. 
So, the first case, the sun as a key light or backlight. Often I use AD200 Pro with reflector. Another option, just flash without light modifier, but you need a lot of power. The second case, cloudy. The character of natural light is soft, our model and the most of the skin is in the shadow. The sun is a field light. I use the octobox, in this case 88 centimeters. It is worth adding that sometimes a large octobox with a diffuser a large distance from the flash to the model for a full body frame require more power. This is a great universal tool for many tasks. Thank you for watching, I wish you a great inspiration. Edition Etching Rag is really a beautiful paper with a distinct texture and grain to the paper surface, but at the same time it holds image detail really well. And that's when I choose Edition Etching, when, when I sort of want a little bit of both, some grain and some texture. It's not as smooth as printmaking rag or Velen Museum rag, for example. Certainly not as smooth as rag photographique, but it also holds image detail really well, has great black density, great contrast. Um, it's a 100% cotton rag paper, no OBAs, of course, um, and it just feels really nice to hold and touch in your hand. And again, the, the smoothness and the grain of the paper is really nice. And I think it just works well in a wide variety of images, a very versatile paper. Um, Welcome back to the Australian Photographic Prize for 2022, an inaugural event. Uh, thank you to our audience. And we just had some students in, which was fantastic. They got to come in and have some, uh, have their work uh, commented on and also get some interesting feedback from our esteemed panel of jurors. We're going to be looking at the creative category next, which is sponsored by Epson. Uh, many of the prints coming up over the next few days in the print competition would have been printed on an Epson. There are other printers, of course, but Epson's our major sponsor, and I certainly own four Epsons. <laughs> Not that I'm showing off, but Epson are, you know, my printer of choice I for the last 30 years. I think we've got, yeah. you got a few? Yeah, I'm just, yep, yeah, one, one. I got, I got three. There you go. So, obviously, Epson are, you know, strong printers in the printer world, and Bruce is here from Epson. It's been good to catch up with him and the support that Epson give the industry right across the country in, in, this, uh, in Australia. We're very lucky. You were going to say something, Paul? Uh -huh. No? Good? Okay. Um, creative category. We all love to be creative, but this is specifically designed for these reasons. Let your imagination go wild through this category. Use the unusual combination of objects, shapes, texture, colour, distortion or viewpoints using in-camera or post-production techniques for novel or creative effect. The base image and all additional elements must be photographic in origin and must be captured by the entrant. You can't go and buy a whole bunch of stuff and put it together. You've got to take it yourself, but it can. we want to see where your imagination took you. So we're going to look through the ten finalists. Congratulations to the following people because they've made the top ten. And then uh, Sunday night we'll find out who gets to win. But in the meantime, let's have a look at our top ten. We'll start with the first one and we'll get some feedback. Okay. Let's start with Mel. I was just lost in the uh, yeah. image there yeah, for a minute. Too. What a beautiful uh, sense of motion and blur happening around this single gull, just right there, smack bang in the middle of the frame. Um, it just conveys such a, it's almost eerie, but quiet kind of moment that's been captured. Robin. Yeah, the treatment of the clouds, particularly on the left-hand side there, is just really um, drawing me in. You know, it's beautiful, just swirling with emotion, uh, uh, you know, all around the pic. And this moment of stillness in the middle with just a little bit of focus where the rest of the world is completely out of focus is um, quite touching for me. Timothy. Yeah, I think that's the strong part, isn't it, where, you know, the bird is bang in the middle. It's the sharpest thing and everything else is sort of uh, blurred around it. So... Visually, we really get attached to that uh, bird uh, and its location and then start exploring the things around. So it's a, it's a great uh, technique. Mm. 
temple. There's a little hidden world in the shadow area on the right that can just take you so many places. It almost looks like it could be the edge of a floating city or this whole other kind of uh, otherworldly kind of aspect that, that is easy to miss because there's so much beauty going on in the rest of the frame. And, and yet it gives us the shadow world and this mystery world to go even further into different ways to interpret it. It's just a superb image. Amanda? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, there's enough hints there in those shadows and um, to, to give us an idea of this bridge or this walkway going across. But yeah, that um, I just think it's interesting that everything is moving and flowing and so beautiful. And the one um, part of the image that is moving is the is the Chris in focus sharp bird there. That's a great point. Great very point. clever. It is very clever. Yeah, well said. Lovely soft you know, blue tone to the image as well. And I, I, I want to say it's Sydney Harbour Bridge. It may not be, but it's just it incredible to have so little detail and yet have such a strong sense of place in the same image. With such a unique perspective mm, on it. Yeah, very, very clever. Plus, you know, you think it's most possibly shot from a boat or something where there is movement, so they've gone with the movement of the boat and frozen the birds. So, yeah, Gorgeous very clever. You can see why that's a top ten. Well. If that's an example of the, you know, the top <laughs> ten, gosh, there must be some strong images in here. Uh, thank you. Next image, please. Let's start with you, Robin. Love this simplicity here. You know, this beautiful, you know, almost tundra-like environment, I think, as, you know, as well, which is the, the palette that just takes us back into the image. And, um, and then you've just got the, the simple, you know, man-made sign right in the middle there, just providing a little point of contrast. Uh, I think it really excels in its simplicity. Amanda. Yeah, I, th I find a, a little bit of humour that in this big, vast, open space, um, we're still giving a sign directing us where to go, where it seems possible you could go anywhere you want. Um, beautiful colours and um, lovely texture. And maybe that is the question. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a really environmental portrait and I, I'm kind of... Um, I'm wondering if there's some sort of climate question or, or or something you know where we might have a choice and uh we're being given a direction to go in and you know perhaps will we take it or not yeah tim anything you can see that we could undertake it to an even higher level and though we know all of these finalists are obviously great images they've made the top 10 there's always that little extra thing that somebody might look at and as judges we've always looked at prints and said, oh you could have just done this even if it gets a 99 anything so just the visual, um, there are a couple of little distractions. I think um, the, top of the uh, top of the image there where my eye tends to get drawn to the dark area up in the top left and the, a few unresolved areas and whether a slightly tighter crop mightn't have made it a little bit stronger. Okay. Anybody else, Paul? Oh, I disagree with that. It, 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 it's, <laughs> Good. It's, it's just agreeing. It's, it's sometimes what you take out as much as what you leave in. Yeah. And there's not a lot being added by that area on the top of the frame, and there is a bit being taken away from your attention. So, and in this kind of category, you can go anywhere you want. Um, so you might crystallise and, and strengthen the, the contextual narrative, which is really in the bottom half of the frame or the centre part of the frame by, by just bringing us a little bit closer in. I, I, I wonder, like I look at it and I see a distinct dark, like a slightly or just darkening on the right compared to the left. And the signpost telling us to go left is almost steering us away from this storm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering whether that, if that is a concept that was in the mind of the photographer, which it may not be, of course, but I could see that being played upon a little bit more. So th I think there's options in what is a great image, but it also shows the power of simplicity and the options that you have in taking it in different directions, just with subtle shifts in editing and stuff. So well done. Next image, please. Okay. And let's start off with boots. Um, the, f the first thing that I um, loved is closer, the light that's swirling there above the sign. There's um, Our sign is very, very graphic. We've got these straight black and white. Um, and then, but those clouds and that, and it's not just the shape of the clouds, but the actual colour of the light, almost like rainbows, swirling behind, making these these shapes that are that are almost like in opposition to this sign that's saying, you know, be straight and be uniform. <laughs> Beautiful. There's almost like an, an aurora kind of uh -huh. uh, quality to the skyline and I feel like that's like the edge of the earth, you know, and, uh, and, 
and and you know what's on the other side with this these beautiful colors that are there and yeah it's a really intriguing image tim yeah i'm enjoying the depth in this image um just that luminance of light in the in the center of frame there so so the perimeter is reasonably flat but just in the middle there that real sense of uh the sign sitting forward and being able to move right in behind it and that, that beautiful glow that's on the sign and in behind has just got a real sense of, uh, of depth, which I'm enjoying. Yeah. Anything to add, Robin? Oh, uh, just the, the shadow, I think, which the last picture, you know, didn't have the inclusion of the shadow in this picture, provides a real sense of place and groundingness, you know, in that ethereal stillness. Mm -hmm. Paul? I, it's presenting a barrier in, in, a, in a context that feels completely free of them. So there's this really thematic contrast between stop and the world is black and white. In, in the middle of this dreamlike kind of realm where it feels like anything is possible and I, I, I find that contrast thematically really intriguing. Yeah, great comments all. Um, strong picture and very, again, another example of strength and simplicity. Next image, please. Okay, start with you, Amanda. Yeah, beautiful graphic image here and the um, really, really simple colour palette where you um, find these two orange cones that are not only different colour to everything else but the, uh, the only triangle in the image. Um, beautiful composition, rule of thirds. There's a balance, um, a balance in the image. like. Yeah, great work. Tim, you're an architect. That's it. I'm, what do you reckon? I'm enjoying it. So um, all the plums are plum. So <laughs> <laughs> All your verticals are verticals. All the verticals right? are verticals. That? That's right. I'm, I'm just – I reckon it's a, a Mondrian in a, in a different format, just the way that the top uh, – the dark sky is broken up and that's almost looking like a, a golden mean square at the bottom. The bottom's then broken into two halves. Then we've got this beautiful um, – beam that's cantilevering through and then then all that's thrown out by the diagonals of the shadows and then the counterpoint of the two little red cones at the side there it's 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 uh it's very sophisticated and there's uh there's lots of levels you can interact with it on so you just you know you des describe the image mm. and what we could see as an architect how does the light the use of light in this image how does it create an oh, added interest pressure's on um well, I th there again, I think we're getting that great sense of depth in the image, aren't we? So that the shadows are a means where you can provide a sense of, of a portal. So the, so the beam's providing a portal, you know, you can walk beyond it because there's a shadow being cast on it. So you're getting that sense of depth um, added to the image. So rather than just being a two-dimensional exercise of geometry, you're then getting that added sense of uh, three dimensions into the image. Paul, why the cones? How do the cones, cones strengthen it? Yeah, I'm, I'm just sitting with that. I, I feel like there's a lot of stepping stones through through this image and, and that's kind of a uh, an anchor point in the image that you can either reach further through the window in the back or not. Uh, I think it brings another conversation about 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 man and about placement and about uh, being kind of told what to do. I mean, cones are, are designed to be positioned somewhere where you're not allowed to go or you're steered away or, or um, and, and they're kind of just sitting there ready to go and yet somehow they're quite a coherent part of the scene and you don't even know why is, is what I find interesting about it as well. Mm. Yeah, just on that, like uh, they bring a scale that you might not know what how big this thing you're looking at is without those two. Yeah, no, good comments all. Yeah. Can, yes, Tim? Uh, and, and the last thing I think that overlays on it is you've got this perfect geometry and then you've got the, the weathering stains running down the face of the beam, you know, just that added, oh, you know, it was perfect once upon a time and now it's getting aged and it's yeah. getting, you know... So getting that sense of, uh, of time into the image. Yep. All right, well, before we go to the next one, we just get a little bit of a change. So I'm going to get Paul and Robin to have a break and bring Harriet and Kay back onto the panel. Thanks, guys. And we'll have the next image, please. And Kay. Say, can I have a quick look at yeah, it? Yeah, go for it. Go and have a little look. And we'll start with Harriet. Oh, I think this is beautiful. It's, um, it's, uh, I'm trying to form my words. Why is it beautiful? I, I love the, um, 
they're sort of crates, aren't they? The, the big kind of industrial crates that are sitting in this really clean uh, um, uh, rural landscape and, and this kind of real um, sort of ethical question of man's footprint on the world that we're doing and, and the little pops of yellow colour, the hazards around what we're doing to, to our environment and to our landscape is just very evident in this. I think there's some similar images that we've been through, I think, it, it, and this person is a, may, might not be the same person, but, um, you know, I think there's a, there's a lot of depth going on with the work that they're producing and I think that I love that kind of, yeah, the depth beyond the be on the image there. Yeah, they are. The, the names are actually on there. So. Oh, they are on there. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm not even looking. <coughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I'm too fixated I with know. the image. I mean, they, they've all been judged anyway, so yeah. it doesn't matter. But these are all. It looks like Alan. Yes. Um, yes. And I think he's had two or three, which is a hell of a feat. Yeah. So, yeah. Very yeah. talented. Okay. Wow, there's actually such a, a depth within this image, for both visually and and I guess conceptually, the the placement of the the three orange yellow elements, the arrows, the direction of the arrows, the barriers placed right in the centre, confronting view as you go, go in there. And I think there are some more arrows on the other side. Um, this is man's, man's impact on, on the environment, on nature. Um, and it's very stark and very strong. And it's almost as if the image is asking, or the photographer is asking, uh, or us to protect that space mm -hmm. rather than the environment and it's the hazards we're actually being moved around from there um, elsewhere um, and so you wonder w what's more important um, the environment that around that is around it or or what it is uh, the object that's sitting in the center there Tim yeah What's the architect side well, I, I <laughs> I think a theme that's picking up on, on the others is that the barriers that are placed, you can walk around. They, they have no consequence because uh, you've got so much choice. Right? And I think this is the same one where we've got the arrows pointing us to the left, but I can quite happily just walk around to the right. So they, ha they have no consequence. Mm. So, so it's, it, it is a man-made construct in a place where there are no barriers. So, so we have a choice. Yeah. I love the conflict of muted mm muted cool colours mm -hmm. and strong warm colours mm -hmm. and there's a very distinct conflict in that and there's a very strong sense of minimalism and yet it's quite busy at the same time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well done Alan, um, another finalist. So good luck on the weekend with that and the others. Next image please. Well, this sort of image makes me think I should be asking Kay Davis for an oh. opinion. <laughs> The, the, the contrast in the image between there's a softness, there's a hardness, there's a, there's a clarity, there's a, an obscureness. Um, it's an overlaying of the worlds, of the buildings, of, the, of what we, I guess, experience on a day-to-day on -day basis. It's, it's the chaos. It's a, there's so many contrasts and conflicts within the image, which I think has been so beautifully captured and, and realised, yeah. Amanda. Yeah, stunning image. Um, <laughs> it, I like the, um, that there's this grittiness to the image as well as being erythral and, and soft, which seems strange to say about um, those two different things in one image, but that's, that's what I'm looking at. It almost gets this sense of like a, um, a graphite pencil drawing sketch um, and also that we are looking at a city, but what city? Like it could be anywhere, so it's not like forcing us to see it as one thing. It could be many places. Do we know what city it is? Pretty is it sure. looks Sydney? <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's a opera house <laughs> down there in the in the bottom yeah. left, uh, right there. Yeah, so it's clever to be able to introduce very little information, yet mm. still, if you've got part recognition of a place and mm. you've been there, you recognise the rest. So. It enables us to sort of identify the space but see it in a completely different way. Mm. Tim, you had a comment. Yeah, no, no, I, th I think this takes us somewhere else. Um, so that, uh, you know, the nature of the city, very hard edge, very defined, and a very identifiable um, uh, outline of the city, complete with the sails of the Opera House down at the bottom there. Um, but it's like, it's like a spirit moving across the city, all right? Mm. So that then that questions, 
you know, what is reality and what's, what's real, what's tangible, what, it, what is affected by the spirit moving across. So, so it takes us to a, quite an ethereal position, which sort of tests, uh, you know, between uh, two realms. Mm. Mm. Mel? I wonder if it's a kind of commentary on the, the, the place City has um, for us now in, uh, you know, having just been through what we've been through over the last few years because it looks to me as if it's going up in smoke. Um, mm. It's kind of disappearing and perhaps it's um, stamp on, on, you know, uh, the world in terms of, uh, you know, its importance compared yeah. to other regional places, for instance. Mm is somewhat um, diluted now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm almost reading it as a, as a visual musical score. Mm. It's, it's, mm. it's a whole um, symphony of what is happening within this city because I think, you know, we can tell it's a city because of the high rises and all that sort of thing. So I think that's, it's got a real visual play around, around that portrayal. Mm. So those narratives and those discussions, which are... To, to a large extent, is speculative based on our mm. Mm. we're looking, we don't know. But again, the technique, the strength, and the, you know the control of highlights, the control of shadows. There's information right from the darks to the light, so we're not sort of being lost. There's nothing to say here. There's something mm. in it, and that that use of that texture to give us the recognisable mm. shapes hidden in amongst this cacophony of more emotive shapes. <coughs> excuse me, uh, I think is part of the cleverness of it. So. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well done. Yeah. Again, that's uh, Grant. So well done, Grant. Good luck on Sunday. Next image, please. Harriet. Yes, wow, what a wonderful, striking image. Um, yeah, I'm not sure um, how this was created, and that's a wonderful thing, I think, that the photographer's done something completely unique. Um, there's, it's incredibly emotive, and you really feel that this is... I, mean, I, I sense this is a self-portrait, but perhaps not. I'm just reading that into it. But I feel like whether it's a self-portrait or not, I feel the photographer in this image, and I think that's really special when you can really feel that the photographers place themselves there. Um, the creative aspects of the how that they've done this... Uh, that texture over the top and the way that the man is dripping out of the frame, so to speak, is just wonderful. I've never seen anything quite like that before. Um, yeah, really, really quite quite incredible. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I guess creativity on steroids, maybe. It's, it's, this, is, this, is, um, this is creative. It, it is something I haven't seen before. It's, there's a huge amount of emotion coming through the darks and the lights and the face and the, and the almost little things that you can almost pull out, the little gremlins and all that sort of thing that, that um, potentially this person could be having a lot of angst and, and anxiety and things like this. And as, as you're saying, it just bleeds out of you and it's just been so beautifully done with, with the monochromatic colour palette tone really um just simply amazing amanda yeah it's a um it's a sad like i get a very sad the blue i guess mm. the blue and the and um are these is this rain is he always under a cloud is is it crying but this um it's coming more from him because it's coming from above it's affected his his environment that he's in so there's this really strong um there's a weight to this image that he's that just makes me feel like this emotion that he's under and probably adding to that is the fact that his eyes are closed but it's very draining you know so i just wonder if it's maybe a commentary about um depression maybe or something like that it's interesting the comments some of you made about the cold color palette and the reticulated effect which is giving that sort of emotional downward pull um, and very clever because even then we can look at it and we may not know how the te technique was done mm. and we can see there's a technique but the technique is complementary to the mood and emotion of the image mm. which is part of you know fine art work you know this is a beautiful piece with, and you could see it at any size and it would probably have you know equally strong effects even mm. though they might be slightly different mm -hmm. did you have anything to add to that tim yeah it's a, it's a real struggle with the veil isn't it the, the veil seems to be doing uh 
it's part of the oppressive process and whether the individual doesn't know how to get out of it or unwrap themselves because it's so intricately sort of uh, woven over them, but the veil's the issue to, for freedom. Mm. Kay, you had a comment you wanted yeah, to? Yeah, I, I was just going to say that sometimes we see images where, where technique is used for the sake of using a technique, but in this one, the, the technique that's been used is complementary, it enhances and it really emphasises the, the, the mood and um, emotion that's coming through yeah. the image. There's definitely a congruency comes through with that technique versus the emotion. Yeah, well done to David. So congratulations on making the top ten. And uh, fingers crossed for you uh, for Sunday. Next one, please. Mel? I'm trying to make sense of the illusion. <laughs> uh, it's a really striking image. And... Uh, um, these lines that are drawing us towards the light um, are conflicting actually with the, what's happening down below because I want to dive into what looks like the tunnel or, or some sort of opening below. I wonder if it's, uh, I don't know, I, it's, it's very impressive. Thanks. Harriet? Yeah, I mean, it's technically very well done, um, you know, architecturally beautiful architectural photography. Um, yeah, very clean. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's kind of perfect in in many ways. I'm kind of I'm wanting a bit of story, but that's just me. <laughs> um, okay. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's beautifully executed. Yeah, well, I mean, we're all photographers here, so it'd be great to have an architect on the panel, wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't so, it? so and too. someone have we got someone with a background in architecture? An amazing photographer who happens to. Have, well, I'm kind of with Harriet. I'd I'd like a bit more story. So um, uh, it's it's very it's it's a it's a great exercise in controlling uh, the viewer and where the eye goes um, using the the various gradients starting at the base with that little little lip on whatever is at the bottom and then using the lines to lead you to the bigger glow in the top. And you know I appreciate it for its um, uh, for its technical excellence, but um, I think the next step would be uh, uh, getting a bit of a, a, a bit more of a story that you could respond to. Mm. Mm. Okay. Did you want to add something? It just reminds me of a gramophone. And <laughs> so, you know, if I'm trying to look into what looks like then a building, um, a facade. So um, I think the, the photographer's been very clever with that use of light and dark mm. um, to create that illusion. Mm. Yes, well done to Graham, I think it is. So good luck for the weekend. And we might give Timothy and Amanda a break and get Paul and Robin to join us again. And we'll have a look at the next few. Thanks, guys. Crazy red. And we'll have a look at the next image, please. similar to the last one it's very beautifully executed very clean uh, very technical um, it's quite interesting to see the opera house photographed like this where it looks like it's um, there all on its own with the mirrored um, with the mirrored image um, you know normally you see that so much commotion around it you're the harbour bridge or the park or the harbour and this kind of really makes it feel isolated and its own beast kind of looks like a bug coming um, out of the water so yeah I kind of like that kind of aspect um, yeah making something different out of something that we're so used to seeing no well, yeah absolutely agree with you and uh, for this the monochromatic uh, 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 use is uh, really um, sorry. I just I was looking at the thing. Um, using the the monochrome has really set off the the shells. I get all the 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 edges of the the opera house, and uh, I'm just really. I think the tones are uh, really well done from highlights through to darks. Robin. Yeah, the luminosity and the light treatment here is just absolutely magnificent. You know, it really. 
did I? Sorry, I said what you said. <laughs> oh, oh well, I, well, I said with what she said. Yeah. <laughs> we have strong agreement we on our panel, agreement. which is always... And I also agree with you, said yeah. about the beetle shape, you know, turning such an iconic landmark into something that looks like a beetle coming out of the water is just fabulous. Paul, apart from the luminosity, what else did you like? <laughs> I, I just feel like it's masterfully contained interpretation of of a feature that's a big part of this this country and and it's presented in a way where we can go all these other places but it, it's pulling us into these other more specific qualities and characteristics that that are in the flesh of of what it is that aren't necessarily where we go to in its original form and and that's what i find really intriguing about this in particular and I mean, how, how much more successfully can you handle the total range? It's, it's quite magnificent. It's like a deconstructed burger. It, it's, all the elements are the same, but it looks completely different yeah, yeah. and tastes different. And, yeah. uh, anyone else? Okay. Yeah. I, I'm actually taken into another world when I'm looking at this because I'm, I'm looking at it as an more, more of a real abstract of that than, I guess, a representation of what it actually is. And I, I immediately saw a crab when I, when I saw this. But I'm taken on, on this journey of where, I guess, mechanics are taking over the world in terms of that whole war, um, war of the worlds type thing where everything, nature has basically disappeared and all we're left with is all these metallic iron structures that man, man has created. And so it's because it's, it's also isolated within its scene, all the, the heaviness and the darkness um, and then this light that's just purely, you know, grabbing you where it is. Mm. So well done to Graham. I think it's Graham. Uh, congratulations on making the top ten in the creative category and good luck on the weekend. Next image. Thanks. Harriet, we'll start with you again. Um, yeah, very, yeah, really sweet story really lo i love that little light uh, yeah those eyes looking straight at you are great um it's sort of yeah i'm a bit um i'm it sort of looks like the child's looking up at an adult but then all those um the, the camera's above the brollies again so I, i'm sort of like trying to find the story well like what is the story in this but it's really interesting i like the use of black and white in this actually um it looks like an old you know 40s film or something you know that looks like she's wearing a trilby um yeah really really kind of interesting cinematic sort of feel to it okay yeah i'm, I'm almost reading quite an oppressive sort of um uh, so horror is not the right word. I, th I think the child is actually, there's almost a, a begging of look at me, look at me, please help me yeah. type thing. And then you've got this foot that's appearing there mm. where you've got this someone there is oppressive over this child. And the raindrops, you just everything's just leading to the face of this child who's looking very sort of um, forlorn and sad and... and um, yeah, so it's quite an oppressive sort of image, but incredibly well captured the way they've yeah the way they've seen it robin he's very safe in his little cocoon isn't he mm. he's, he's got you know he's got there's quite a rainfall there you know it's quite chaotic and quite you know in, invasive and he's protected from that with his little with his little clear umbrella there the addition of the foot you know on the right um you know it I'm not sure the significance of that, but it feels like it's, you know, like a little surprise element, though, that puts everything with the other umbrellas around him in context. So, to me, he represents like he's just feeling, you know, reasonably safe in his little world there, hanging tight onto his little umbrella handle. Mm -hmm. Paul? It's, this really speaks to me of, of vulnerability. Mm. Um, you know, this, this isolation, this monochromatic kind of weight and, and multi-layering of these things all around and and here's this tiny flimsy little piece of material that that is the only thing protecting this young child and and so from an emotional perspective and what it's sort of communicating to me is is a lot about that a young child on the in an adult world potentially that that is just isolated and alone and and that elemental quality uh, speaks maybe on behalf of something bigger than that through the rain so a diverse range of comments. Did you have something to add? A little bit more diverse. I actually see the child as hope. He's lit and uh, the 
potential adults around him are not. Um, and so perhaps I see him as, as the future. Um, and he's safe and dry and, you know, I, I kind of laughed at that. that yeah, that, that yeah I, I see where you're going. Yeah, I think the, the thing is the discussion shows that the strength of the image that it's created this, this lots of different ideas. Mm. I love the simple use of four umbrellas to create a vignette around that central image, you know. So you know, very clever and masterful, you know, editing and put together. So from what I can see from here, it looks like it's been really well handled. Make a great print as well. Mm. Well done to... Adrian, looks like. Uh, yep, uh, good luck on the weekend. Okay, and let's have a comment to start with from Robin. It's a beautiful play of texture and line and shape and direction. I, it takes me everywhere through this photo. So, you know, and then you have to um, just stay still for a moment to find, to settle on a point somewhere in the photo. And for me, that takes me to the top right-hand corner with a little dark island there as well. Um, but I'm really enjoying just the, um, the tonal ranges between each area. And when you just stop and stay still in one particular area, you find a little bit of detail in each different spot. Thanks, Robin. Harriet? Yeah, um, it's the graphic nature of this is what makes this image. It's beautifully um, exposed for the for those grey areas, for the whites. There's different tonalities and all the different whites there and it's really well held. Um, yeah, and then as, you, as Robin said, when you go in a little closer, you can see the little details, little handrails and stuff, which is a bit of a joy to, to move around. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful graphic photo. Okay. Textural, um, I guess the, the, the placement of all of the separation between each of those layers has been well... Um, control very well controlled, um, and and just the waves, the movement throughout the image is just um, very beautiful. As someone so said, that um, the the tonal tonal range has just um, been well controlled. Well, anything to add? I just think the the simple tonal range has allowed the viewer to move around those more complex areas of the image, so you can go and find them. Um, and, and have a look around at what, what's on offer there. Paul, got anything to add? I think it has a lot of visual flow about it, but there's a real complexity to the design and the structure of this image that, that actually I find, like, where is this going? Why, why include this big heavy mass and, and, and around this, this soft elegance sort of visual flow? And I'm still not sure, and that's actually probably why I like it. <laughs> Again, diverse comments to reflect an image that's got lots of directions that you could take it in when you read it. And a good example of how strong imagery created and edited to a high level allows for different viewers to draw something different. Yet we all get that same sense of softness, high key etherealness, and the, you know, the organic nature of the curves. There's no straight lines as such other than those ones in the dark bit. So uh, again, an, a worthy inclusion in the top 10 for the creative category, um, sponsored by Epson here at the Australian Photographic Prize. So we wish everybody in that category luck. That brings a close to today's commentary, unless someone else had a comment. Sorry? It's Epson. Creative is sponsored by Epson. Yeah, but the whole awards is sponsored. <laughs> well, listen, if you want to get a sponsor's name in, did you want to say Nikon? Go on, say it. Say Nikon. Nikon. There you go. <laughs> So the entire digital awards, obviously, over uh, sponsored. Uh, the major sponsor was Nikon, who we immensely thank. And we spoke to Kylie Dredge earlier today about Nikon and their involvement. Uh, incredible cameras, um, always coming out with something new. Some of their new stuff, the Z series, some of those lenses are incredibly sharp and amazingly uh, accurate yeah, and fast in their focus too. I've got to say. The um, but the Epson uh, category, which was the creative category, uh, are good again top printers. So like all our sponsors, we like to thank them for their support for the Australian Photographic Prize. We look forward to sharing with you the print competition tomorrow, which will start the judging tomorrow and the next day. Uh, of course, if you're in Melbourne, get on down. If you're not, you should be on a plane already. Um, or if you're keen, drive, depending where you're coming from. Perth might take you too long. Um, but again, thank you to our wonderful panel for giving up their time and their expertise and their passion. Paul, Robin, Mel, Kay, Harriet, and of course, Amanda Boots. And we had, uh, who else was here today? Tim and someone else was in here and they've disappeared. Adam. Adam, Adam Hurrigan. So we did have a wonderful uh, 
group of minds, a mind trust to give you some feedback. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully you've taken something away and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And uh, guys, stick around. We'll see what else we've got to do. But that's it for us today from here. Thank you.